so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control. And I think I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly what your tone was going to be on that last one. <laughs> you knew there was going to be a little twist at the end? And I think I like it. I think I like it. I think I like it. <laughs> I was so wondering, because Grant like, pointed at you, and I know that triggered... Pointer Sisters. That's what that really was. <laughs> I didn't have an thing. opening, and I was like, point, point, right. pointer. That's how like, quick pointer, this man is. Pointer, 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 just wasn't as accurate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't set up the same mood. Not really. No. Not for, no, not for this game. Um, <laughs> not for a train robbery. <laughs> What's it? Doesn't that, doesn't his random men start with like a, uh, they're like chatting. It's like, oh, there's a storm brewing. Isn't there like, before they get into the singing, oh, there's yeah, like a little rap so. up front where they're just like, <laughs> He's got oh, you better watch out. memory of this track. Yes, <laughs> amazing amazing I remember memory. like, I never went to, I never went to weddings in like my twenties and thirties because I didn't have any friends. Uh, right. But I remember going like, when I was younger uh, and as a kid and those were the songs it was like the chicken dance <laughs> and it's raining men and all the group yeah. would come out it's a raining man hallelujah <laughs> but there's yeah there's a great little opening to that uh, it's like oh temperature outside's warming up uh, anyways it's about to rain some cyberpunk red tonight yes, yes. it's raining we've been playing red. this now coming it's in red. 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 it's red it's red it's red it's red and red hallelujah Hallelujah. This is this is week three of us playing this. Uh, we, we kicked off the year with the all new New Game Who Dis playing Cyberpunk Red. And tonight's the final sesh for now. For now, because uh, word on the street is this is the hottest new podcast of 2021. I didn't say it. Duh. I didn't say it. It's the streets. The streets and are talking. Yeah. I would, uh, yeah. I would love to take credit for this, but it's really just our special guests. Kate Stavis and Francis Bradbury. They give it up for these guys. Yay. Come on. You guys got some fans out on the internet now. <laughs> you're a meme. I love, think once you're a meme, you're something. I love them back. We love them back. We love them all back. Oh, Francis, what is it like to have fans? I know no one's yeah. liked you before. Uh, <laughs> this is a weird, very unlikable person. Uncomfortable. Very, <laughs> very uncomfortable. <laughs> but also kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with it. <laughs> Mostly uncomfortable, but also kind of. <laughs> Kate, you already had a successful, uh, successful social media presence, but now I imagine you've quadrupled your numbers because you were <laughs> featured on New Game Mudas. Yeah, I'm, I'm already famous, so this is just, <laughs> nothing I new. Came, I'm used to right. it. <laughs> just thought you'd slum it with us for a few weeks, and uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so glad to have you guys. I want to thank you for uh, giving your time uh, to do this because this is a lot of work. You had to learn a new game system. You had to create characters and jump in and. Honestly, uh, it's just, uh, it's a real joy. And this is what I want a new game who dis to be. I, it, the whole point of this was, uh, well, there was a lot of points. Uh, one, I wanted us to play more games. There's so many good games out there we never get a chance to play. That's, that's how this show was created. We we're just like... There's a worldwide pandemic. We can't do all the shows we used to do. What if we do the thing we always wanted to do and try out some new games? And then when it took off, I said, I want this to be the big featured show of 2021 for us so that we can play new games, but also play with new people. Because not only is it great to play with uh, new people and and like friends and new friends, uh, people that you just want to like hang out with, I think it makes you appreciate your other groups that you play with because you learn mm -hmm. uh, from other GMs, you learn from other players. We play so often with the same five guys, and then we have a couple women that play with us as well. It's the same group. It is so refreshing to have uh, new players. And uh, as the show continues, we're going to have new GMs as well. So I, I really want to thank you. It's just been a, uh, a real treat, and I think it's really uh, taken off. And I'm excited for next week, which we're going to announce very soon, what the next game, cast, players, and GM are going to be. Yeah. Um, I, I want to echo that, too. Uh, yeah. I just want to say, going into this tonight, I am so freaking excited to play tonight and that is uh in no small part to playing with kate and francis which has just mm -hmm. been a blast and i'm actually honestly uh gonna miss it i'm gonna yeah. miss it i was like thinking about like i'm bummed yeah. not only because of like what seems like a really cool session in front of us but just this group playing with this group has been really fun and having grant here 
but not be a character is so awesome for me. <laughs> I just have to constantly rub it in my face how successful he is. It's, uh, it's, it's really been fantastic, and I'm going to miss can, it. I, I can't wait can, till we can do it again soon. That's all I want to say. You can put all yeah. of his natural luck towards just working on the show rather yeah, than just the stream a, working. Use character. that natural luck to have no blips in the stream. Yeah, that's Grant, awesome. Grant, do you miss uh, giving, giving Joe the business live? I, I do miss giving him the business, but let me give him some business. It's not called luck. It's called talent. Talent, Joe. Look at <laughs> you can use some. That's how the stream works. It's not by luck and chewing gum. It's I know. talent. You want to make it in this fired. town? Shots sure, Brian. Fired. I look around this this stream, and I'm just like, "How did I get a job on this show? <laughs> this <is> fantastic! <laughs> luckiest guy on earth. Luckiest Irishman from Philly. I gotta say, I've, I've had a ton of fun it's working working in the uh, background as a producer. It's been fun watching y'all play, and it's been fun." Seeing new faces, it's been fun seeing uh, Skid Joe and uh, uh, Troy play uh, kind of from the outside as well. I know I've had that opportunity uh, with Echo Quest and with uh, Raiders of the Lost Continent, or I'm sorry, Legacy of the Ancients, um, but it's, it's, it's been a blast to see. So uh, thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in and uh, let me do this on the side as well. It's a little side oh. hustle I like to call producing. It's been so great, Grant. I mean, you've really elevated the streams, uh, both in the audio and in the presentation. Uh, I feel bad. It sounds like this is going to be that we're signing off after this. It's like no, the last episode no. of Cheers. So like, sad. Uh, all right. Well, uh, hell of a three weeks. I just <laughs> want it next January. Just I'm going to cut to black and cheers. start playing Don't Stop Believing at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop. You just watched the last episode of Cheers, Skip? I, we did, yeah. It's I completely tear -tear. forgot Diane comes back. I totally oh, forgot that happened. God, Diane. Suge. Huge, yeah. huge at the time. She said she never would. Uh, anyways, but yeah, no, we are not only are, are we coming back, the new game Who Dis Train is rolling through the station. We got a lot to talk about before we jump into the show tonight, but I think we should just uh, lead with something strong. I am excited uh, to do this, uh, to uh, tell you what's happening next week. And one of the reasons I'm excited is because for the first time in the almost six years since we've been a company, I will not be on a product that we're putting out. And this <gasps> is not happened yet and i'm very as excited to just to just let let them spread their wings and i'll just sit back in the control tower and being like i can never let this happen again this is, <laughs> it is not allowed Ooh, this, is, this is painful uh I, I, no. I give it one episode before you're busted <laughs> <laughs> one and a special guest for episode, episode two troy <laughs> Enjoy it's, gonna, the cast. it's gonna be like the bronson pinchot show at last <laughs> a solid one ep after perfect strangers um, but yeah, no, I, I'm excited. This is part of the, one of the things we want to do is in order to create more content, we have to bring more people on and we have to start spreading out these casts and having more guests on. And so the new game who dis is, is the, the testing ground for this in many ways. So without further ado, uh, let's tell you what's happening. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you already know that starting next week and for the next three weeks, we will be playing tales from the loop with the following cast grant, show them, uh, what's happening here. Oh my gosh. Look at there that. There they are. Look at handsome <laughs> devil in the bottom right. Oh, oh look Grant, at Grant Burgers. that. <laughs> Your old buddy Matthew Capitacasa is going to be the game master for this series, and it's going to be featuring our good buddy Skidmar. Grant will be stepping out from behind the producer chair while also sitting in the producer chair so he can get his, uh, his, his, I was going to say get his teeth wet. Is that an expression? Get your teeth wet. Get your teeth wet. It's a Dallas thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be getting Won't his get teeth, my teeth wet, wet. Uh, <laughs> with our good friends Eleanor DiLorenzo and uh, Ann Richmond. I am very excited. If you don't know Tales from the Loop, uh, it's Stranger Things meets ET meets the Goonies, uh, and it looks really Meat really soul. cool. Meet Scythe. Yeah, that, <laughs> a lot of Mecca on countrysides. Uh, so check that out. Very excited. We're excited to see uh, how, how it does. And uh, please keep watching. And then, uh, again, the, the plan with this is every few weeks, every three weeks or so, we're going to be changing to a new game with new cast, new players, new game masters. Uh, we already know what the next few games are going to be, but I'm not going to tell you. you got to tune in to find out. you also got to tune in if you want to win <gasps> exciting prizes. Joe, tell them what they could win tonight. Tell them what you could win tonight. Uh, 
Uh, thank you so much to Artel Sorian Games once again. One more time, thank you guys so much for uh, supporting tonight. this little endeavor. I mean, this was our first run out with this new stream of New Game Who Dis, and you guys came out huge uh, to make it a big deal for all of us. And what Artel Sorian is doing is giving away. Uh, not only copies of this game, but copies of all their games tonight. This is insane. Insanity. Uh, so we're starting with uh, the game that we're playing, Cyberpunk Red. Uh, this hardcover, which is very difficult to find. It's sold out on their store, but they are offering uh, a copy of this tonight to a winner uh, on the stream. Uh, and then also you'll get a PDF along with this as well. Skid, then we have another PDF enter. copy enter, uh, of the game that we're going to give away to another winner. And then the big, uh, the big prize, which we've been uh, hyping for two uh, weeks, is the entire digital collection of our Telsorian games. Everything that they do, which Troy had mentioned before, includes the Witcher pen and paper RPG. Extremely highly rated. Go check it out on Drive Through RPG, uh, as well as other titles like Teenagers from Outer Space, Castle Falkenstein, which sounds amazing, and uh, and uh, among other things. So check out their website. All of their games, their entire digital library. Over 30 books, over $500 value, yours, just for tuning in tonight and entering to win the contest. So we're going to do three winners tonight. Uh, somebody gets all of the digital content. Somebody gets a hardcover of Cyberpunk Red along with a PDF. And then our third place winner will get a PDF of the core rule book of Cyberpunk Red. So thank you again to RTG. And uh, look for the link in chat. Uh, Brendan, our community manager, is going to drop that link in chat for you to enter the contest. Uh, enter it there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll drop that chat a few times uh, throughout the night, and we'll announce the winner in chat before the end of the show. So stick around, watch the show, we'll check out chat, and uh, we'll we'll post the names of the winners there. Thank you, guys. Yeah, very exciting and very cool of RTG uh, to offer that up. And uh, spoiler alert, there's going to be more giveaways next week for the new game we're playing. So you need <gasps> to tune in every week if you want free shit. Um, <laughs> That's why I watch. <laughs> uh, I, I'm so excited about tonight. And it's weird because it's like a nervous excited. Uh, when we play our, our, our flagship game, the Glass Cannon Podcast, when we play Giant Slayer. It's so stressful because it's just, I feel like there's a lot of pressure. And it's not like I don't feel like there's a lot of pressure here, but I'm just excited to play and stumble through these rules together, stumble through combat. You know, what I wanted to do, uh, achieve last week was like, get get your get your teeth wet uh, with, a, <laughs> with a combat, a simple combat where it was like five on one. And now we're going to start getting into the nitty gritty of uh, the of, of all the things that you can do in combat. And really, uh, it's it's whatever you can imagine. Like Francis, you were asking me before we went live. Like I'm still try, I'm trying to figure out the ins and outs of this. I'm like, well, you just tell me what you want to do, and then we'll, we'll we'll reverse engineer how it works out with the dice. Uh, odds are it's going to involve a d10 and uh, some of your skills and some of your stats. Uh, you might have to roll it against some my d10 skills and stats, or you might have to just roll against a number. I'm like, ah, get higher than a 20, and I'll let that happen. Uh, but that's pretty much the game. Uh, there is a level of complexity there if you want it, but I think that you're going to find out that their combat system that they call a uh, uh, Friday Night Firefight, I think, or is it Thursday Night Throwdown? Was Thursday, Thursday Night Throwdown 2020? Friday Night Firefight. Fr it's Friday Night Firefight, Okay, yeah. so I think it was called Thursday Night Throwdown when it was Cyberpunk 2020. Now it's Friday Night Firefight. It's supposed nice. to be super fluid, Um Let's see how it plays out. Uh, you guys ready to get your teeth wet? <laughs> so no. I'm going to get my teeth drenched. <laughs> get my teeth drenched. Get my teeth drenched. <laughs> Soak them in a glass of something. <laughs> Somebody dry oh, no. those teeth. I don't know where we're going with this one. Uh, okay. So, yes. a couple episodes ago, we created these characters. We created them together. We created Quake, the Netrunner, uh, Moto, Lemmy, the uh, Tech, Jade, the Exec, with her bodyguard, Kevin Ragbone, and of course, uh, infamous Nomad from the John Claude family, Ron Yolo. Yolo. Uh, Yolo. It's Yolo. 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 <laughs> Yolo. Uh, they uh, have an opportunity with a well-known fixer, a well-known fixer in Night City and in the cyberpunk universe, a guy by the name of Hornet. You meet up with him and he tells you the score. There is a, a, a gang war going on between two rival gangs, the Iron Sights and the Red Chrome Legion. They've been going back and forth to each other, back and forth to each other. The Iron Sights 
made some deal with shady guys in suits. There was this like guerrilla journalist who was like catching this all on film of the handoff between these uh, mysterious men in suits and the iron sights handing over briefcases. We don't know what's going on in there, but odds are they were trying to get something that they could use against the Red Chrome Legion because the Red Chrome Legion are the bullies in this situation. They're both horrible people, these gangs. Uh, but the Red Chrome Legion were the uh, aggressors. And so Iron Sights were trying to even the score. Well, come to find out the Red Chrome Legion hit a truck that was owned by the Iron Sights that most likely contained whatever they got from this mysterious cabal of suited men to use against the Red Chrome Legion. These crates have locks that they can't open. So they've hijacked a train owned by Militech, one of the uh, infamous uh, military corporations, one of the two corporations that was involved uh, in the fourth corporate war that led to the time of the Red. They hijacked one of their trains, the Hammerhead, and they are taking this cargo outside of Night City to one of their techs who can hopefully crack these locks. And then there's potential for them to have perhaps some really dangerous weapons, you would think. You're not quite sure. You asked Hornet what's in the cargo. He's like, I don't know. Not my business, so it's not your business. You just need to get it back to me safely, and you get paid handsomely. 2,000 euro bucks each. 2,000 eddies. That could uh, maybe uh, get you a night in a hotel. Maybe a little meal better than your daily kibble. So Hornet tells you, he's like, I got my own train. It's leaving the station tomorrow night. 9 p.m. While this train is cooking along its rails, there is a 75-minute give-or-take stretch where it's going to run parallel to the hammerhead. You need to be on that train. And during that window, you got to get on the hammerhead, take care of business, get those crates, get it back onto my train before the trains go their separate ways. It's a train heist. (laughs) <laughs> and it's happening right now oh, can't mess up <laughs> um, did we ever go into any great detail on why exactly there's these two tracks that come together directly side by side that for 75 seem minutes separate <laughs> off in different directions yes. I mean apart from the gunplay and explosions it doesn't seem safe <laughs> well, <laughs> these guys, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure of Night City has changed uh, radically over the past uh, generation uh, since the bomb went off, since the pocket nuke went off in downtown. But when you get out of Night City, you know, the further you get out, more of the old infrastructure is still in place. Now, the net may be gone, but these old railway lines, people know these. Like, they just haven't changed yet. People are rebuilding Night City. They're not rebuilding the railways out there. Hornet has his ear to the ground. Hornet knows his shit. Hornet knows that this particular track that the Hammerhead's running on, a track that's, uh, you know, a train that's owned by Militech that runs this route day in and day out, he knows there's a stretch where... It's parallel. It's not like they're banging against each other. You had to jump to that other train and jump you did. All of you successfully made your athletics chip to land on top of the train. You're on top of this four car train. You find a hatch. You break into that hatch and Jade and Quake and Ron and Moto get in stealthily think Moto might have like hit a rung or something and one of the guys was like what the hell was that then they had a little funny exchange and then Ragbone (laughs) slick as slick can be you think Ragbone's not gonna make any noise he's Kevin Ragbone (laughs) (laughs) he comes down hard thunk lands on something one of the guys turns around shotgun in hand he's like we got company Roll for initiative. Oh, oh, damn it, Ragbone. Oh, damn it, Ragbone. Ragbone. Uh, uh, I, I, I asked Kate before we went live, I was like, Kate, do you mind if I emotionally play Kevin, but you do all the rolling? So I'll be like, this is what Kevin does. Can you roll? And Kate graciously Ooh. agreed to do that to make life a little easier for me with this game that I've never played. Uh, let's talk Let's talk initiative here. Um well, I normally have so many windows open when we play our other games. Now that it's a game that I've 
I'm so unfamiliar with. You should see the window situation <laughs> here. I've got cheat sheets that I made. Uh, all right, uh, got my niche up. Let's start. Let's start with old Kevin Ragbone. You got a nine, and then you add ref, uh, Dex, right? Reflex. 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 So, yes. It's, uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. For your initiative, you're going to roll a D10 plus your Reflex stat. Maybe you have other abilities or things on your person that give you a bonus to your initiative. Probably not, but I assume that's something in the game. Uh, Jade, what did you get? She got an 8, so she also has a 16. Ooh, a couple of 16s. We'll do a roll off in a second. How about Ron Yolo? Ron got an 8, so add to a reflex, that's uh, 14. 14. Very and nice. Moto. Yeah. Uh, Moto Lemmy Overclock Scott at 10. A ten total for Moto. Total okay. for initiative. And what oh. about old Quake? Quake started out with a natty ten. That's a seventeen. Ooh, Ooh. niche. Um, Jade, I'll just you know I'm going to do is let you decide if you or Kevin want to go because he's your bodyguard, so you you can tell him uh, if you be my bodyguard, I can be your long lost <laughs> pal. Uh, all right, well. it is round one. This is. <laughs> This is just stupid. Uh, do I have the right? I think I have the wrong initiative tracker open. I do. Uh, that's all right. Just talk amongst yourselves for two seconds. You guys excited about uh, this? Is, this? I'm very excited. So excited. <laughs> I want to point out that I have I have my meat arm now with my tattoos, and I upgraded. I got my I got my cyber arm. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, these things feel amazing. They're like pantyhose for your arms. Both of them. I totally understand why Alan Iverson. Would wear these because it feels like the, the, the air sock, right? arm socks. Yeah, <laughs> those things are great. Um, Probably just, a lot better than getting real tattoos. <laughs> Quake, Keeper. you got a what? <laughs> seventeen. I got a seventeen. And one more time, Ron Yolo got we're a talking about We're talking about initiative. 14. We're not talking about yeah, the game, 14. man. We're, we're not talking, talking about, about this game, man. Talking about practice. Talking about practice. All right, I got it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> How can I make my teammates better by practice? <laughs> practice. <laughs> Talk about practice. Uh, all right, Jade, Ron, and Quake fanned out to the left behind this larger crate. Moto fanned out to the right. Uh, Ragbone is sitting there as a sitting duck. This guy turns and says, "We got company." But Quake, you are faster than everyone yeah. and have a chance to act. What do you do, Netrunner? Uh, Quake is going to... Uh, Quake in his boots! Are these crates climbable? Uh, yeah, I'll say they're climbable. There is not a ton of space between the top of that crate and the roof, but you can get up there, and you really won't take any penalties. You're just going to be crouching. Um, all right, he's going to try to, like climb up there sort of stealthily so like if, if it's a small space up top he's going to try to crawl up into that little area and not be seen doing it all um, right so let's do two checks give me an athletics check for the climb okay uh and athletics then we'll, check for the climb is a 12 is a 12 okay there's enough hand holds on there on this crate for you to get up easily um you hoist yourself up no problem now let's see if you did it uh stealthily to avoid the detection of these guys uh you know their attention is focused now on kevin ragbone you would think right. but if you make a loud noise they might look up there. on the die that's a 19 all right, Quake so you get is up rolling there. early. Rocks. <laughs> nice. Remember in that pivotal scene in The Karate Kid when Daniel uh, really uh, takes it a little too far at the Halloween dance. Uh, and uh, while Johnny's trying to smoke a joint in the bathroom, he sprays water on him. I think it was uncalled for. He really, I think he learned a lot from that day, but he runs away. You're coming and, down on Johnny's side on that one? Well, I, okay. I always, right. I've, I've watched that you movie. Would, I bet you when you were a kid, you were on Johnny's side. No, no, yeah. no. However, <laughs> however, I've seen that movie no less than 500 times. And there's always that scene where I'm like, you know, Daniel, this is you're stooping to Johnny's level by doing this. You don't need to spray uh, water on Johnny. You need to turn the other cheek, but he doesn't. And so, Cobra Kai chases him down, and they beat the shit out of him. But yeah. if you watch, that you know who, scene, one of those kids, one of those kids in that group that, that those bullies is Jerry Duggan, who's on our rival podcast, uh, Nerd Poker. I did not know guys. that. I, I did know that one of the kids was Steve McQueen's son. 
Um, oh, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. He's a McQueen. I think he's Steve McQueen's son. How many McQueens are there? Anyways, the point is, <laughs> if you There's look, plenty. Daniel gets like right to his apartment complex in Reseda, and he's trying to climb the fence, but he's got too much shit on him, and they just beat the crap out of him, and they show a scene. Uh, they're going to try and take him down, and then you see Mr. Miyagi like quietly climbing up a crate. That's what I was trying to get at. That's what crate looks like. Here. <laughs> yeah. They don't see you. <laughs> You are Mr. Miyagi. Man, <laughs> really good. good explanation of, of what yeah, happened there. Yeah. You know, there's some uh, fanboys out there, some John G. Avildsen fans uh, <laughs> who are really enjoying that uh, simile. Uh, Metaphor? All right, Metaphor. so he's going he's gonna to get up there and sort of get, can I get there and just sort of like be peeking over the edge? Yeah, man. Okay. That's what that'll, right. that'll be. So the action is the climb, the athletics check, and then the move is just crawling up there yeah and i I'm, I'm i'm putting your stealth as part of a move now i know a skill check is something is counts as an action but for me I, I like this being you're using a move you're using the stealth as part of the move and the athletics was your action or vice versa so i'm fine with it and you see that there are three of these guys and they all have uh shotguns Ooh. so that's uh that's oh. bad news that could be a lot of damage uh do you yell down to your friends they have shotguns they have yeah, exactly. <laughs> i thought about it for a second but i was like the they'll, they'll, the see. they'll see <laughs> they'll yeah. see this is a great uh situation i think for for shotguns at least that you know because we're all behind crates and there's a very narrow corridor so they can't just like blow shells out to the entire back of the thing and get us all right now in one shot they have to come down to us so yeah, Hopefully we of, can flank them. One of the beauties about cover in this game, they make it pretty simple. I think they call it the golden rule about cover. If like if there's something blocking uh, the pathway between you and an enemy, you can't see them, you can't shoot at them. However, you can take a few rounds to blow that cover away. Uh, so yeah, this, I think this could work for, uh, for your favor, but also against your favor if they start getting in there. Let's see what happens. Luckily, you guys are so quick jade gets to act now or kevin ragbone jade you tell me what you want to do <laughs> i'll tell you what ragbone's initial like instincts are ragbone gets down he realizes he just he he zigged when he should have zagged came down hard the guy turns on him ragbone's instinct is just fire at the dude but if you want to act first you act i'll let him do his two rounds of fire so he's got what's Ooh, he yeah have? he's got that very heavy very heavy pistol, pistol. Pissed. Redeem he's yourself, ten. Ragbone. He's got a Come on, Ragbone. Handgun. Red Ragbone Redemption. 18. 18. For okay. One. And uh, let's see, uh, how far is Kevin? Kevin is uh, two, four, six, eight, ten meters away. Uh, so the uh, John Ski, the DV for uh, ten meters away is 15. And what's your roll? 18. 18. Nice. So he has 46 per fire. Oh, oh well, th- do you have to roll twice? I think so. I Like you roll For two each, attacks? Yeah, two yeah. attacks. I think. I yeah. All right, so roll the damage on the first one. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> eight damage. Okay. Yeah. All, right, All right. So he, uh, th- some of that gets through this dude. Oh, okay. So he's going to uh, move. And it will ablate his armor. He's nice. going to move up just a little bit, do one more shot. Yep. Hmm. Oh, that was better. That was a nine, so 23. 23, yeah, definite more. hit. Uh, four more D6. Six, 11. Nice. Oh, two sixes! Oh, oh no. 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 Yes! I said to myself, I said, three sixes. this is... This is this Oh my God. All right. A couple things are going to happen here. Uh, This must happen constantly in this game because you're usually rolling four, five, D6. Not usually, but that's a very common uh, damage roll. If you roll two D6s at any point, bad things happen. Uh, This is a body crit. So I need you to roll another two D6 and let's see what happens. Five and one, so six. All right, the guy has a broken arm. 
Yeah. Nice. 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 And it's a shooting arm. Brutal. Yes. Can't even take a shot this round. The broken arm cannot be used. You drop any items in that arm's hand immediately. And I believe a shotgun is a two-handed weapon, which means oh. he needed both hands mm-hmm. to hold it. So the shotgun falls out of his hands. Oh, the one that he aimed at Ragbone. Imagine Ragbone jumps down. Shit, the guy draws shotgun. Ragbone's like, boom, boom. Ah, just knocks a shotgun right out of the guy's hands. <laughs> Amazing race. He's going right. to, before his turns over, move back so that he's not like right in the middle and blocking everyone. Oh. Wait, did we total all the damage and, and say yeah, what so it all now, is? What is the damage on that second one? It was three sixes, so you said? Three sixes and a five, so 23. Wow. Good lord! Wow. Joe has never Damn, rolled that in his life. What? Three sixes and a five? Three sixes yeah. and a five. <laughs> All right, so uh, 18, 23 points of damage. Cheap. All right, so that's definitely going to ablate his armor. Uh, and he is straight up dead. Oh, yes! 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 Ragbone. <laughs> Ragbone just killed that dude. That's so dude, cool. Ragbone. His shotgun's just lying on the ground. Oh, man. I love that sentence. Ragbone just killed that. Like, man, talk about compounded bad news. Like, I'm sorry, sir. You have a broken arm and you're dead. <laughs> Doc, what's the prognosis? Well, uh, I've never seen anything like this. Your, your arm is clearly broken and you're deceased. But am I going to make wow. it, Doc? No, no, no you're, you're 100% dead. Uh, all right, Ragbone, uh, very cool also the way you did that, uh, Kate, in uh, this is something that we should really experiment with, and I think it's going to take us some getting used to, that kind of move, attack, move, attack. You can do if you have weapons that have a two rate of fire, which the very heavy pistol does. So Ragbone really not only uh, getting some good shots off, uh, exploring the space, and now getting out of harm's way. That dude is dead Um <laughs> and it is Jade's turn. All right, so as Ragbone goes back, they high five each other. She's like, yeah, that was great, good job. Nice, nice. Um, so Kevin, that was great. She, that was amazing. Good <laughs> job, Kev. So I'm assuming she can't see the other people and know Not where they are. Not from behind that crate. I, if I were you, I would just run heedlessly to the other side of the room. The uh, uh-huh. car. It's I'll really the only that. solution. <laughs> yeah, the screaming and waving your arms like this. Ah, ah, dropping your weapons as you go. Ah, yeah. Ah. I think I'm going to see, I, I see what Quake did, and I'm going to go up there too so that I can see from above and shoot down because I don't want to run up this alley and then run back. All right, let's see if you're stealthy so, enough. First roll the athletics check. Athletics, where is that? Okay, nine. Oh, uh, 12. 12 is enough, yep. Okay. Uh, same hand holds. I think uh, Quake rolled a 10. Uh, it's pretty easy to get I rolled a 12, too. Yeah, same, 12, same yeah. roll. So you get up there. Um, no problem. Mm-hmm. And then roll a stealth to see if you can uh, be undetected. Where is stealth? Oh, there it is. There. Oh, a 10. I said zero, and I was like, oh, no. Uh... Oh, so then I roll again because I rolled a 10. That's right, Joe. You rolled a 10. Oh, when you I roll a 10 that. on a d10, again. you roll again and add it to your roll. Uh, if you so roll cool. a 1, you roll again and subtract it. But uh, yeah, so if you rolled a 10 and Quake rolled a 10, you guys are getting up there really, really stealthily. <laughs> uh, and that's it. All right. I like it. I like the use of the box. Can I give you guys a little GM thought? Sure. This is more like cannon fodder talk. We do. If you guys don't normally watch our shows, we do a, a show on Fridays that Joe hosts, uh, where we talk about like behind the screen stuff. This is just something that's so simple, but it's just a, a little mini revelation to me after years of GMing. Like when you, Joe, said, "Can I get up on the box?" I'm like there's nothing in the book that says you can climb the box. But there's nothing in the book that says how high the ceilings are. It's just better to be like, especially in a game like this. Yeah. Let's figure out how we can do it. And now look how interesting it's become just by saying yes. So uh, it's just a little revelation that I thought I would share with you guys because I think it's a a fun way to play. And I don't do it enough in Pathfinder because it just seems more rigid. Playing more games is helping me. uh, I don't know if it's helping you guys, but it's helping me to kind of see more of the possibilities of what we can do. So anyways, that's uh, that's been uh, GM Corner with your old (laughs) pal Troy. (laughs) Tune in next week. This is after five years of Troy pretty much exclusively saying no as a GM. I like to say no. 
Tune in next week for a GM Corner with Matthew Habitagaza, who has four hours of GMing <laughs> under his belt. <laughs> and is ready to go live. <laughs> but he's a big yeser. He's a, he loves yesing. Uh, all right. Quake went. Ragbone went. Jade went. Is it going to be one of my guys? Nope. It's going to be Ron Yolo. Ron oh, Yolo. Nike. Ron Yolo. Allons-y. Um, <laughs> so I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm still undercover here. I'm, I'm, I'm rather I'm behind one of the boxes on the ground while these yeah. two are up above on the top of the box, right? Yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw their fire and take a shot at one of the other guys. Ooh, you're gonna have to move into that space because those guys are still hidden behind their crates. Now, let me ask you this: uh, What is your move? Uh, I was gonna well, do. Hold on. Like can a, I can I offer a suggestion that might get exactly what you want and and buy the book? Yeah. Hold on one second. I just wanna I wanna work out this and then I wanna hear your suggestion, Joe. What is your move stat, Yolo? Oh, what is my move stat? Okay, I thought I was like I was gonna just make a move. I was gonna do like a barrel roll kind of thing. And <laughs> just like jump in there with. What's a your move, kick. Yolo? What's your move, oh, man? That was my move. Uh, no, it's a signature my move, move. My move is five. Five. Okay, so you okay. you have to move one, two, uh, three, four, five. Like, uh, or maybe you could get an attack around here. It'd be kind of tough. Like, really, you'd have to move here five, and then you have no movement left. I was thinking you go one, two, three, four, uh, right below Jade, and then maybe take your fifth to move back. But then you'd be shooting this guy around a corner. It's kind of tough. Joe, what's your suggestion? Yeah. My suggestion is use move one and just move here to the edge of the crate, and then you can use the action hold action until one of them steps into the corridor in your view and just fire from around the corner once at him. What about That's diagonal a... squares? Could he oh. technically hug the corner and then cut one square off so he can move up and then move back one? I don't think you can move up and move back one as the, the held action. Uh, the, the held action is just an one action that's triggered and it happens. So the question is, if, say, an enemy moved into the square right under Jade, would, this is a Troy question, like, could Ron shoot from there to there? Uh, no, you would need to get in the middle here. Okay. to be able to fire at him. You can't really shoot around. The way the movement goes is like, you can move, shoot, move, but if you mm -hmm. want to hold your action, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. Now, I think, Kate, was your question, can Ron take a move from there to this diagonal space? Yeah, and is then one? save a square, yeah. I'm going to say no there, just because I already said yes earlier. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say okay. that, that normally you can move diagonally and it doesn't cost you any extra, but where there is a crate there and it's tight quarters, I'm going to say that you can't move uh, diagonally there. Well, the other thing you could do is because you've seen that they have shotguns, I think it's somewhat reasonable for you to, say, move back here and hold your action until they step in and then fire because shotguns don't have a great range, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, is it 15 feet? It's only 15 feet, right? Well, no, well, that's depends. only if you're using um, shells. Where he's using slugs, a shotgun is just like any other weapon. From zero oh. to six meters, it's DV 13. From seven okay. to 12 meters, it's 15, and it goes up from there. Uh, I think you would still be in, you know, you'd want to be close to up your advantage. If you get a little farther away, seven to 12 meters, it makes it slightly harder. There's no right okay. or wrong answer, Francis. It's really just, what, what does Ron do in the moment at this point? We just got to... Okay. We want to give you a suite of options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I like the idea of the hold action. So, yeah, I want to get out in the middle. I don't want to go all the way back here, but I want to get out into that corridor where uh, Ragbone's dead guy is, basically. Yeah. And wait for some, one of those guys to poke their head out. Okay. That other guy to poke his head out. Great. So your action is uh, the hold action. Is that what it's called, Joe? Hold yeah. action. Yeah, hold action, and you yeah. would then move in the initiative queue. Uh, when your action triggered, you can do it when a, um, uh, you must specify an event to trigger an action or a specific okay. number um, and what so, the intended target is. So the intended target is whoever comes around that corner. When someone comes visible without cover, you will yep. fire at them. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, fire, we can make life I, I got my I got my two rate of fire, too, because I got the very heavy pistol. So I'm, I'm double tapping. I think that's one rate of fire. Very is that heavy. one rate? I thought, no, it's I two. No, it's it's three. Three. Yeah, that's awesome. what Ragbone just did that. when he lit up that dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
All right. Well, I'm going to make life easy for you because it is one of these mooks' turn. And uh, he's like, Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> and he comes around the corner with a shotgun oh, ready Bobby. to fire on Ron. But Ron, you get to act. Blap, blap. So just That's... think, this kid is just like, no, Bobby, we came up in the red population together. And he just turns the corner, shotgun out, and Yolo, Yolo's standing there with a pistol. Uh, deadbeat on him. Roll to hit. You are six meters away, so that's going to be DV13. You're going to roll your reflex plus okay. your shoulder arms uh, or your shoulder arms base plus a D10. Oh, shoot. Okay, my shoulder arms base. Give me a second there. No, 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 no. Handguns, handguns. You handguns. I'm base. sorry. I'm thinking it was a shotgun. Yes, handguns. Shoulder arms is for And And very heavy and pistol is a one rate of fire. I thought that was a two. I saw it. I thought I saw a two. You no? tell me. I'm Kate telling you. Just cheated live. That Kate just joined Team Grant. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, welcome to the Glass Cannon Network. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Remember, you vet. killed an enemy with a I total cheat. I have two cheat. on my sheet. I thought I saw, yeah, I, so I saw out. it in the core book somewhere. I could have sworn I, I saw I that just love that. Book. I love that. Like, uh, well, it says two on so my confident. sheet. You wrote so your confident. sheet, Kate. It's not a good source. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I saw that somewhere in the Yeah, very the heavy book. pistol, one rate of fire. I remember seeing it specifically and being... Uh, bummed because okay. I had a very heavy pistol and a heavy oh, pistol I think is two rate of fire. Very uh, heavy is one. Uh, oh, sorry. I do have a heavy pistol. I'm sorry. That's why it's two rate of fire. I right. have a heavy pistol. Uh, I thought it was a very heavy. Uh, that's I have. I'm, I'm looking at my sheet right now. It's a heavy pistol. Beautiful. Not a Grant, very heavy. Great. Uh, your Thank thoughts you. on Kate's blatant cheating? As a, uh, <laughs> as a dirty <laughs> cheating yourself. Welcome to the winning team, Kate. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're to be on the team. You ain't winning. You're going to love our corporate retreats. We have yoga. We have goat yoga, actually, this year. It's really great. Um, you're going to love it. We'll talk after. So excited. Thank you. Bye. You're going to want to hear more about this goat yoga, but first, uh, you know, give yes. me handguns, base, yeah. plus a D10. Okay, hand, handgun base is eight, and I'm rolling my D. Rolling my Ooh, D. With a two. I got a two. Oh, no, it's a miss. That is a miss. Oh, Good thing you got a rate of fire too. YOLO. <laughs> you in trouble, YOLO. Oh, no. Shoot okay, again. I get, I get another roll? I get another roll yeah. for the yeah, second Yeah, you get a rate of fire too. Okay. Second roll. Right. Okay. Good Joe, Lord. are you concerned Let's that where you go. held action, you only get one? I don't think that's the case. And no, I'm concerned that his number sounds too low to me. You have no ranks in handgun? Yeah, no, I only, uh, I had like a, my, uh, it was a six reflex plus uh, two. I, I just put oh, you only two have on it. two. I, in yeah, I only okay. added two. Yeah, I was cool. going I just, cheap on the I just wanted to make sure. It's yeah, a real bonehead no. move there, Yolo. Uh, I was, was this your first that. role playing game? Uh, yeah, I was hoping to build that. I'm, <laughs> used, to, I'm used to the heavy melee. I'm a, I'm a heavy melee guy. That's how I roll. That's how you had to do um, it in the reclaiming reclaimer territory. Exactly. <laughs> you they do it hand in hand out there. Say, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just All gotta right, get roll into better it. this time. You gotta roll right, five I or did. higher. I got an eight. I got an eight on my second shot. Booyah. That is gonna hit. Uh, what is the damage for a very heavy pistol? Don't ask Kate. <laughs> um, hold on. Three D six. She just she just makes up numbers left and right. Uh, uh, four D six. Oh, no, no, three D six. I've got it on my sheet. I've got it on my sheet. I see it right here. Three D six. All right, I'm rolling. Three. Ooh. Ooh, one. Ooh. If, if I roll one, do I have to like minus something or does that Only not work? Only on for the D10, no, not fine. for damage. All right, three, one, two. Good God. Ooh, awful. Ooh, That's weak. That's awful. get through his armor. Six, six total. Uh, this guy has better armor than uh, Bobby, and so Shit. that doesn't even get through to his hit Damn points. It. Oh no! Oh, that's so cool. Get hit with it. Gets hit with a bullet. Just, boom! Doesn't do anything. Uh, like, <laughs> I like the emotional ping pong that happened there because Ron steps there, feels very confident. Like I'm gonna be like Ragbone. Next guy that comes out, <laughs> I'm hitting him with two shots. The guy's like, I'll be ah! damned if Ragbone takes my thunder. Well, it's just like boom, it hits a crate. And then the second one hits, and the guy just looks up at him, and then he fires his shotgun at Ron Yolo. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, All no, right, no. let's check out this no. dude's stats. <laughs> no. All right, uh, this is going to be shoulder arms. All right, here we go. Got to hit D V thirteen. 
12. Yes! Oh, oh, Russell. Wow. wow. He misses. Dodge the bullet. Yellow! Literally. Literally. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Uh, it's cool. Man, we need to talk back for this. There's just so much cool stuff happening behind the screen. <laughs> Troy, uh, I, I already talked about it today. I was like, I'm going to hit up Troy for <laughs> a cyberpunk debrief. We, we, we got to do it. There's we so much to it. talk. It's just, it's a, the more I read about this and the more I play it, I'm like, this is a really, really fun system. And mm-hmm. I thought at first I was looking at this and I was like, from a GM perspective, I'm like, I don't know. It seems a little too simple. It is not at all. It is super flexible. Too and simple? The, the, well, it, not so too this? simple. It was too simple. For, well, for example, the back of the book has like a bestiary of bad guys, and there's only like 10 of them. And then you can kind of like modify them based on the encounter. And I was kind of like, oh, I want like 100 guys to pick from. But now I see how it works. They've modified these villains, and it makes all the difference. And that was a difference between a, a 12 and a 13, which would have just blasted Ron Yolo right out wow. of the back of the train. Very, very wow. cool. You guys should all buy Cyberpunk Red or win it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this guy misses. It is the other dude's turn. All right, so the oh. other guy, shit, he is, uh, he's seen Bobby go well, down. Troy, while you're thinking of your action, let's yeah. just mention again, if you came in late, we are doing a giveaway. That's what Troy meant. We're giving away Cyberpunk Red, uh, the hardcover tonight, along with some PDFs. So look out for a link in chat. You can join the giveaway there and uh, get yourself a free copy of the game so you can play it too. The art book is beautiful in that book, by the way. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. All right, I got to check this guy's move because it's the dude way up in the corner here, okay? He's a little further away, and his move sucks. So here's what he's going to do. One, two. Looks at Bobby. Didn't have the same relationship with Bobby that this guy did. (laughs) Spits on Bobby's corpse. (laughs) Fuck Bobby. He got the better locker. He had a gullet. And then uh, he will move through his buddy's space, stand right in front of his buddy, oh, and point black, point blank, take a shot at Ron Yolo. Oh, he has it. a shotgun. Guys, quick, Jade, help me out. <laughs> and he misses as well. Nice. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh. He is facing the little Ron me. Yolo. It's great. I it's swear. so smart. These are like recruits that, that like. Part. They're, they were just handed shotguns and like imagine the, the flashback scene it's like alright guys you you use this and the new guys are like normally we use very train, heavy pistols yeah. we have <laughs> skills that are based in very heavy pistols and they're like yo you need these so these guys have shotguns that they're not really adept at using so nice. even at point blank range he just uh, just like got a uh, Pulp Fiction just boom <laughs> and Yolo's standing there unscathed just did it like okay <laughs> one guy is dead courtesy of Kevin Ragbone, Quake and Jade have snuck up to the top of this crate to the north, and it is Moto Lemmy's turn. Hey, so can Lemmy can he climb up on this crate too, and then and then take a shot? Uh, yeah. So you want to climb up, not stealth, and instead not take stealth. the shot. Absolutely. Yeah. Roll athletics to climb. I'm going to say DV ten. Yep. 15. You get up, no problem. Nice. So he clambers up on top of this thing using his his cyber arm. Do you have any idea you're just shooting at? You piss off, you caboose jockeys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Natty 10. Natty 10. Oh, my God, oh, dude. We are just on the rocks. Blow them We're away, so Lemmy. Right. Basically, point blank range, and you uh, roll a crit. So, obviously, oh. it will resolve roll damage. Ooh, that's ugly. Uh, do I double it, or do I roll twice? Uh, no, you actually would just roll a d10 again and add it to your check to see if you hit. So oh, okay. the cri- it, you crit on the attack. Natty 10. No, no, no. Yeah, so you oh you rolled another 10 another on the 10? Another natty 10, yeah. Okay, so what is your uh, what is your base to hit? Uh, it is 8. 8. So you basically effectively rolled a 28 to hit. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you definitely hit... But you don't, uh, like you crit, the crit allows you to roll the d10 again, but it's really to see if you roll two d you don't crit unless you roll two d6s on the damage. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. The, the extra d10 comes in handy when you're like, <laughs> I'm barely, I have no, I have a very small chance of hitting this, but if I roll a 10, I get to roll again and add it to it. Uh, so you really hit this guy, what's the damage? Uh, it is uh, 13. 13. Okay, that will ablate his armor, and some of it will get through. 
So nice. Lemmy climbs up, aims, and oh, were you firing at the first guy, the one that just yeah. shot at Yolo? Okay. Yeah. Hell of a nice. first round. Three people on crates. Ragbone and Yolo are on the bottom. You guys have an opportunity here before they go again, and it is Quake's turn. Quake, they don't even know you're there. Yeah, so uh, I'm wondering if I can move uh, as a move action. My move is seven, and I want to see if I can move to this guy, like on the ground. Can I slide off the thing? And get to this guy with a move seven? Uh, yes. I'm going to say, give me an athletics check just to make sure you don't fall to hamper your movement. You'd have to roll really poorly. Uh, that is a 13. 13. All right. You get down with ease and you get up right next to this guy. And this guy isn't even looking. He's just like, this guy's ah, pointing man. a shotgun. Yeah. Down the, uh, the little alleyway there. And this six foot six, 310 pound dude <laughs> with a <laughs> VR headset over his eyes just walks up and he's like, Picked the wrong day, but and he just, I'm going to do a grab check and try Ooh. to grab him. There All right, so go. that's going to be brawling plus your, uh, let's see, brawling plus dex plus a d10. Uh, and it's going to be against your dex plus evasion. Plus, plus a D10. D10. That's right. This is going to be our, our, our first opposed roll, I believe. Yeah, our first uh, opposed roll. Okay, I always uh, want to grab a D20. So uh, my dex plus my evasion skill plus a D20. This is very cool. Uh, do you want me to give you the DV before you roll? I'll roll mine. Uh, uh, sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you right now. Ooh, 16. Ooh. Whoa. Uh, Dang. That's now, be, now that's Skid, think be. about this. That 10 you just rolled, this is where it really comes into play because, like, I rolled a 16. Like, if Joe rolls a 10 here, he gets to add another 10 to this. Opposed rolls is when rolling a 10 really helps. Yeah. Just, if his dex is eight or more, then he can try to evade the bullet rather than using the table. So, right. I have, yeah, rolling higher is definitely better. Uh, can you beat a 16? I didn't roll a 10. I only rolled a 7, which totals to an 18! No! <laughs> so Got you him! just, this guy doesn't even see you, and you just come up and like rear naked Whoa. choke him. Nice. So I have the option of just literally taking the shotgun out of his hands or grab grappling him. So I'm going to grapple him in this okay. case. Nice. Because That's... he cannot use a shotgun if he's grappled. You cannot use a weapon that requires two hands. So, uh, and you can he... start choking him, too. Yep. And next round, I could start choking him, or I can use him as a human shield. Yeah. And yeah. Human shield. <laughs> so awesome. So cool. But before we get ahead of ourselves, <laughs> um, Troy, just so you know, it sounds like <laughs> next round, this guy's pretty much only option... Just to break out of the grapple. To break out of it by doing the same exact thing I just did. He rolls dex against bra uh, dex plus brawling against my dex plus evasion. Right. I think, you know, there might be a, an argument for him dropping the shotgun and drawing his heavy pistol and, like, putting up against your chin to try and fire a shot off where that only requires one hand. Mm -hmm. And I think he takes a minus two to attack. It's just like Pathfinder. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what he does. If it comes to his turn, because I like the idea of this dude. Uh, what is he going to do? Is he? He's emotional. He just saw Bobby die. Is he going to be like, get off me, get off me, man, get off me? Or is he going to be like, drop his shotgun, you motherfucker, and just try and like shoot you with a minus two? I don't know. Will he live that long? It is Kevin Ragbone's turn. Uh, on, uh, Ragbone. So Ragbone, hero. Uh, I think he wants to. Oh man. Seems like Quake has this under control here. I feel like Ragbone just wants to fire off some shots, but he's not in a great position where Ron's standing. Uh, I don't know the rules for shooting between your friends, but to me it seems like cover, you know what I mean? He's going to blow Ron Yolo away to make a hole to hit uh, the guys beyond that. I think he needs to get a clear shot, and right now he doesn't have that shot. Uh, Jade, what do you think? Do you tell anything? You, do you want to yell out to Ragbone, or you want to stay stealthy? He can wait if he wants till he has a clear shot. All right, That's so what I say. Kevin looks up at you and you just kind of like. Don't make wait. a bad choice. Wait for the right, right choice. <laughs> and Ragbone gives you his classic Ragbone nod. <laughs> classic Ragbone. I can picture it. <laughs> classic Ragbone nod. <laughs> uh, Jade, you go. All right, so she's going to shoot down at 
the one that's not grappled by a uh, quake. Okay. Nice. Twice. God, you guys have great character names. <laughs> quake. Ooh, so that's 13. All right. Uh, ho, 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 13. That should be a hit unless he has an evasion. He does not have the ability to evade, so that yeah. is a hit. Yes! Nice. This guy's already been hit by Moto. Roll damage. One, two, Proper damage. Damage that six. mother. So nine. Nine points of damage. That will ablate his armor again, and some of it will sneak through. Uh, but he is not the rookie of this crew. He is still standing. Oh. For this shot... Since I saw that go through and I didn't do a good job, I want to try to aim for his head. Oh, now oh, two shot. Do you, do you have a very heavy or just a heavy? Heavy. Okay, so you do get the two shots. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Um, all right, so this is going to be a minus eight to attack. If you're just watching uh, this for the first time, you don't know Cyberpunk Red, you can make called shots where you shoot at their arms, their head, or their legs. And some people have armor on their head, some don't. Uh, that ablates the same way as body armor. If you shoot at their arms, you can <laughs> knock weapons out of their hands or other shit. If you shoot at their legs and succeed, you can break their leg. It is very hard to pull this off, especially at this level level with a minus eight but jade's feeling cocky let me see what you got jade oh god db 13 i rolled a seven so it's a negative one it's a 10 negative one is a 10 that is a miss and it ricochets off and lands right in ron yolo's thigh oh Oh, no no. Oh, right That's in the femoral no. artery. That'd be favorite. Oh, no. <laughs> and Yolo's bleeding out. Oh, God. Ah. Oh, spewing ah. blood. Ah. Did somebody just aim for that guy's head? Uh, nailed. <laughs> uh, Ragbone, I'm going to say, uh, seeing what's going on here, Ragbone is going to hold. There's really, It's really not smart for him to get like to here right now. Uh, he wants to wait and see what Yolo does. So Ragbone's just going to hold. All his right. action. Um, so oh, wait, I, I have to call my shot. It's a ready. I don't think you can just hold. You can just not take an action. But right, in you, order, if you wanted do. to jump into initiative, you have to specify a trigger. I'm going to hold myself to initiative nine. I think okay. I can do you that. You can do that. Yeah. Yes. So Ragbone is now going to move to initiative nine. That's an interesting thing to be able to do because now I'm tied into that. Uh, so, and it so, is Ron Yolo's so you, turn. So you, you, you move to the, to the ninth spot in, in the initial, initial role from now on? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. He's just okay. going to wait. So, he really wants to see what Ron Yolo is going to do. He's heard a lot okay. about you. <laughs> well, you're about to see some shit right now. Uh, <laughs> I am going to... It's getting tense. Ron is, is, is... He took a shot. He's not hitting with the, with the gun. I'm going to the heavy melee weapon right now. Oh no! Yes, yes. I'm, I'm in wow. close. I'm getting in close. I'm making it personal. Oh, uh, so smart. I cut a so smart. And I'm pissed right now. All right, uh, so you I'm drop pissed. your gun, yeah. move up to him, and draw your melee weapon at the same time. What do you What do you uh, carry for melee? I'm rocking the samurai sword off of the back. Oh come and on! Into, into oh, one he's got a samurai sword. And I'm bringing it forward. <laughs> Of course he does. And I'm like, this motherfucker. Sorry. <laughs> He's got a I love uh, Ron Yolo. This is what I need from you, Yolo. This is going to be an opposed role. It's your dex plus uh-huh. your... Do you have uh, skills in sword play or, or I, melee? I do. And my melee skills... Hold on one second. Uh, is there a skill for sword skill. or is it just melee weapon or handheld it, weapon? Yeah, it's, it's under melee. Uh, my base is 10 under melee weapon Ooh, all right good that's a 10 plus uh-huh. a d10 roll let me tell you what you what you gotta beat it's gonna mm-hmm. be his dex evasion plus a d10 uh da, 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 da. where's his evasion okay this is what you gotta beat yolo making it hot you think go, you're tough go. yolo you gotta beat a 16 oh come on yolo come all on right, yolo. That's a tough one. rolling for my life Mm, it's a two. Oh, <laughs> no, no Ron Yolo. Oh. Damn it, Yolo. Damn it, Yolo. Oh, oh that's bad. I'm my, my melee weapon, damn it. That is bad news. Uh, so Yolo steps up, feeling confident, drops his gun, whips out a samurai sword, swings it, and the guy just like jumps out of the way, and you clash against the uh, cargo crate that Jade I is standing like, on. I can see like sparks fly off as your blade like slides down the metal crate. Dang. Jade, you feel the crate shake as Yolo's blade misses wide. 
It is the guy that is being grappled by Quake. What do you want to see? Do you want to <laughs> see him shoot at a minus two with his handgun or try to break the grapple? His friend is dead. He doesn't want to just break free. He wants revenge. He wants he's revenge. a fascist. Full of, he's he's full, of, one full, of shot. Uh, full of juice. <laughs> Quick. Drops his shotgun, pulls out his pistol, and he's like, oh, Quake is moving. I'm going to shoot you. And he fires off at Quake. Oh, this is so scary. Oh, God. Uh. This is a, uh, a poor quality, very heavy pistol. So that is going to be a handgun. This is crazy. What is the DV? It's it's 13? It's like zero to seven. So yeah, 13. And you can and take I, a minus two to the hit. Oh, that's right. The minus two is clutch. Let me make sure. Is the DV 13 for a handgun? Let me it's, check. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Yes, it is. Zero to six is a 13. I rolled with the minus two. Uh, 16 minus two of 14. Oh, oh no. my God. You just blew Quake's head. Oh, oh, just blew man. Quake's head clear off. Well, let's oh. see. Did he hit him? Did he hit him in a, in a vital area? It was good that these guys had two weapons on him. I don't have two weapons. Do any of you guys yeah. have two weapons? Well, besides yeah, melee we... and range, do you have two ranged weapons? No. no. Just the one range. 13 points of damage, Quake. Ooh. Yeah. How much does your armor take from that? 11. All right, so oh, okay. your armor ablates from 11 to 10, and you take two points of hit point damage. Okay. Not right. bad. Imagine he's like, he's, he's trying to get here, he's trying oh. to shoot you and not himself, and he gets you right in the gut, and you're like, ah, son of a bee! <laughs> Oh, it's now in the it's gut. The... I, I was doing it on my head armor. It's in my gut armor? Yeah, it's in your gut armor. Uh, yeah, because he didn't aim the shot at the head. You don't oh, shoot at the head. only when you aim at the head. Only okay. when you aim at the head. Do you have the same SP? I was just doing for... flavor like he was like pointing it up <laughs> in my face. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, and then I realized that is but an aim shot. actually, with Quake's size, you could do this, and he would still just be hitting him in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy next to YOLO... Still got that shotgun out. Damn it. He's going to point blank fire the shotgun again at Ragnolo. Here we go. Oh, God damn it. I got to hit <laughs> DV 13. Here we go. It's a very hard, very hard check for him. He's not uh, skilled oh, with this tough. weapon. 10 on the roll. Oh. So that is a oh. miss. Oh. Wait, wait. So, so he, 10 total. total. Ten oh, total. Okay. He misses. Okay. Yes. Uh, so yet again, this dude misses. But you see uh, your buddy. You hear boom and quake. Yella. Oh. So you know quake's been hit. Oh. My palms are like sweating. I'm like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, really feel the intensity. Out. Like this dice would fall out of my hands. It's all going yeah. to shit. It's all going yeah, to shit. It could get bad fast. Can Moto save the day? Moto, you're up. All right, Moto, like, frog walks, crouching along the top of this crate to get a better angle on this guy. He's just like, she get away from my friend, the great Ron Yolo. <laughs> Boom. And takes a shot. That is, that is, uh, that is uh, 18 to hit. 18 is a hit. Nice. Oh, nice. Roll that oh, damage. Oh, my God. This is the worst roll I may have ever had in my life. 5d6. Four ones and a two. Oh my! Oh, Unbelievable! Man. Oh God! The six. Oh, oh, brutal! Doesn't even ablate. Oh, that's uh, awful. Six awful. total. Yeah. All right. No, it, it does ablate because he's already been ablated. Uh, oh, okay, good. And some does get through, but just a brutal, a brutal, oh, terrible, uh, terrible, brutal situation he's, there. He's <laughs> still nice. He's still Damn. standing. Yeah, I can't uh, believe this guy. It is Kevin Ragbone's turn. D uh, Kate, Joe, I, I think you guys might have a good handle on this. Do you guys know what Ragbone's options are here? Can he shoot through his friends? Can he move through enemies? Do you know um, anything off the top of your head? Because I just, I, it's not uh, not coming to me right now. Yeah, I don't. I'm sorry. I, I, Get him, I don't Kev. remember reading anything about shooting through your friends. Yeah, I don't either. Um... You would think there would be like a penalty um, 
Yeah, like, why I... can't he just move to the other side of the room? If it's supposed to be super fluid combat, I feel like Ragbone, if he has the move speed, could end up over here. Right. What is uh, Ragbone's move, Kate? His is six. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, so he has the movement to get here. I don't remember reading anything that says you can't do that. What if... Oh, okay, yeah. I'll keep Else? reading it. I'll keep reading it. But in the, the meantime, Isles? why don't you just let him do it? It's fine. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to yeah. do. But instead of being... He... Yeah, no, he's going to move all the way to here. And then uh, I would imagine he was peeking around the corner and saw him hit Quake uh, as this guy's struggling. And so he slides up there and just puts his pistol right on the guy's chest and fires off two rounds. Kate... Well, Give me those point blank rolls. Or does he only have one? It's only one round, yeah. That's right. Oh, I forgot it wasn't but. Jade that cheated. It was Kevin Ragbone. But you know what? Ten. Ragbone plays by his own rules. A 10. And he's got a 14 in handgun, so that's 24, and I can roll wow. again. Oh, but. God. You're, God. you're crushing the 10s. Definite hit. Roll damage. How much so damage is it? 4d6. 4d6. Ragbone. Ragbone. Two. Come on. Three. <laughs> Two. So, God. I what I rolled. One, three, two, two. Ugh. Eight. <laughs> Eight points Eight of on damage. Eight on top of 46? No. 46, yeah. Wow. Red bone plus. Wow. All right. That guy is, uh, he is still standing, but it looks like his armor is really messed up. Um, however, uh, he is not dead. Oh Ragbone slides into position at the end of the initiative. It goes to the next round, and it is Quake's turn. And can I just say, I didn't know how I was going to feel until we started doing it. I love how combat feels in this system. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It feels incredibly deadly and dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Quake, is, he's got this guy, like, around the throat. He thinks about choking him, but after the guy just like, bam, gets that shot off into his armor, and he can feel that it drew blood, he just immediately... No clever quips. He just immediately jams his very heavy pistol into the dude's side and pulls the trigger. Oh, okay. So he, you had the option of just dealing your body stat directly to his hit points. If you succeeded, uh, if you know you're uh, you're already grappling, you could just choke him. But instead, you release him and just fire directly into his situation. No, I don't release him. I just I just do. A, oh, you're just gonna take the minus two. Yeah, I'm just gonna take the minus two. Okay. Uh, DV thirteen. Here we go, DV 13, seven on the die, got it. Nice. Uh, the adjusted for the record is uh, 18, so definite hit. Very heavy pistol directly in his side. Uh, and that is better. That's 15 points of damage. Nice. 15 uh, points of damage. Nice. And ah. he is dead. Yes! 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 Quake. He just lets him drop out of his hands to slide onto the floor. <laughs> There's only one guy left, and he is surrounded. Jade's on a crate, Moto's on a crate, Yolo's behind him, and Quake and Ragbone are flanking. Uh, Quake, you technically still have your move action if you wanted to really corner this guy. Up to you. Mess him up. Quake. Oh, uh, sorry. What, what is it? If you want, you have a move action if you want to uh, make sure that this guy can't go anywhere. Oh, right. You when, you're right grab, when you're grappled, you can't take a move action. So I guess that killing him released me from th that action. Uh, so um, I, I'm just going to stay. I'm just going to stay where I'm standing. All right. Uh, you guys have an opportunity here to come out with only one of you getting uh, blasted pretty hard. It is <laughs> Jade's turn. Come on, Jade. So... I should have done this last time. I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to aim for the head again, and I'm going to use luck. Ooh, oh, good idea. that's right. Yeah. You guys have a luck pool that you can use uh, every session, and I'm counting this three-game series uh, as a session, uh, and it refills at the end of that session. So you haven't used any. Uh, that adds, what, one to your roll? Or you can it use as can, much luck as you want. I can um, luck. You can tip the skills in your favor. In game mechanic sense, you can apply points from this stat to offset die rolls in your favor. However, this pool oh. of points only refills at the beginning of the next session. So I can just pool. I have seven. You got seven, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You want to bet the farm? Go all seven luck to get I this head shot? Do I have to like bet or can I just see how under I am and, <laughs> and then yeah, use I, it? I don't think it says. So I think. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, it sounds like the yeah, wording you said you that you it. could add it after the fact. That's what it sounded yeah, like. Yeah, I, I think I remember reading that, but I, I could be wrong. Okay, if two of you feel that way, then yeah, after the fact, roll and then decide how much luck you want to use. All right, aiming for the head. I've got an 11. Minus eight, eight to hit. So that's no minus. It's 11. 11 flat, so you want to use two luck yes, please. to get to the 13. Nice. Uh, nice. All right, so you burn two luck, and you hit this dude in the (laughs) head. Nice. Uh, Let's see. He does have head armor, uh, so let's roll damage against the armor on his head. And what is it? It's You you double whatever goes through, right? Yeah, it's double, yeah. Oh, yeah, I double whatever goes through. Multiply the damage that gets through to your target's head armor by two. So first, let's see how much gets through, and then you're going to double that. Six, five, and a one, so that's 12. One of them was a six. It needs two, right? Wait. Yeah, you need two. You okay. rolled 12 points of damage. Six, a five, and a one. A six, a five, and a one. Wow. All right. He has four stopping power on his head. That means eight would get through, but because you did a called shot, 16 get through? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you brain this dude. <laughs> and yeah. <he> just, <laughs> yeah. 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 Just like... <laughs> So cool. Very, that is the coolest thing that's happened oh, since we started. That movie was so cool. This is so fun. <laughs> Holy shit. Run, just, like, run just wipes the brains out of his eyes because he was right there. Was like, oh, awesome. Oh, so many brains in my eyes. This guy stepped up and imagine just like, boom, fires with the shotgun. Yolo's still standing there. Boom, fires up again. Yolo's still standing there. And then, blah. <laughs> gets hit by Jade and Just goes down. amazing. Awesome. It feels so realistic. It yeah. really super does. Super fast, the super map, intense, and when you take a bullet too. to the dome, you're done. You're That's done. Yeah. <laughs> Double damage. Uh, the amount that gets through. Holy shit, wow. that was it's cool. Also winning, it's any, any system this deadly, winning initiative is so important. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah, it has a rocket tag feel to it. But I mean, that combat still went, that was the third round, I think, maybe even the yeah. fourth, third round. And so it's not like it's over in one round, but it is deadly. But just Quake, getting those the only... first shots off, like being able to, that's that's massive. Huge, yeah. huge. Um, Quake, you're, yeah. are you the only one that got hit? I don't know, but I got hit. No, I got hit. I got hit. Ron, Yola you got a, hit as well? Uh, yeah, Ro- Yola took a, a ricochet in the thigh. No, that was that was a flavor, flavor. ricochet. Uh, flavor oh, ricochet. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, I was oh, just kidding. Yeah. For flavor. Okay. Oftentimes, I'd be like, "Oh, you miss and you kill your best friend." <laughs> but I'm just bullshit. Yeah, no. Welcome uh, to a Troy game, Francis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Lots of lying. Uh, all right, Quake. Do you want to try and do anything to mitigate the damage? Can you do anything to mitigate the damage? Are you below any uh, wound thresholds? That's something we should have talked about right away that we didn't. Uh, that oh, You start yeah. taking penalties when you're below half your hit points. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not there. Um, I, I do, I, I don't have it on top of mind, but I, I would love to know my first aid options. On top of mind? Is that an expression? Uh, I don't have it on to- top of mind. <laughs> um, what? How the first aid skill works? But it never heard that expression. Top, top of, of mind. Of mind. <laughs> it's like getting your teeth wet. <laughs> <laughs> on top of mind. Yeah, top of mind know. awareness. Come on. On the top of my head, or is that a, is that actual expression? I've never heard that. All right. I th- <laughs> on top of mind. I know that first aid. You you need it to stabilize yourself so that you can get hit points back through natural healing. You have to make a first aid check to do that first. But I don't know about healing in the moment. I don't know about that. Yeah, you might need some sort of like stim pack or something to actually get uh, yeah, healing. Yeah, I There's don't have no, anything like that. I don't there think. are no clerics in this game. I think you really just have to like... Carry that you, damage. You got to carry that damage, move on, and change your play style up. <laughs> uh, I don't... I, I can't think of anything, but I didn't really to dig too shot. deep into... Uh, <laughs> how healing works. I think healing only happens when you rest, when you have time to rest and some healing, you need to like go to a hospital or like you need a ripper doc to stitch you back up. Uh, once you get like, uh, uh, critically hit in your head or your body, um, let's go to grant here. Grant, you find something. 
Uh, yes, indeed, Troy. Uh, Producer slash secret GM Grant. Secret GM Grant uh, has looked at the med tech role, which no one took, whose rollability is medicine. With this ability, yes. med techs can yes. keep people alive who should be dead with their knowledge, tools, and training. In the time of the red, they are as much doctors as they are mechanics, caring for people who are often more machine than human. Uh, and whenever the med tech increases their medicine rank, they also choose one of three medicine specialties to allocate a single point to surgery, <coughs> pharmaceuticals, or cryosystems operations. So I think there may be no clerics, but there are med techs in this world. So a med tech might have been able to help you, but no one has any points invested in med tech, right? Did Ragbone drop out after one year? Uh, does the I first think aid even skill? if you have that, I think you still can't heal unless you're you're doing surgery because you can't that can you help you like med tech like stuff that. that will help you address that'll you can do a quick fix or treatments on critical wound effects. But I don't think it can get hit points back except through rest and and uh, medical assistance. Yeah, like I have a feeling I have a feeling you're right. Um, you know, there's obviously stability checks and stuff that you can you can try and stabilize someone if they're mortally wounded. You're not mortally wounded. You're just you're just a little effed. Um, so, yeah. But they can stuff. do like uh, first aid if you want something to patch up real quick so you don't get worse. Yeah, throw a bandaid on them, Lemmy. Or uh, I can do it like. He seems sort of out of sorts, so maybe I can just heal no, the mind. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. You sure? Just He's a got the bullet wound. wound. I don't know if Let's he... keep going. We don't got no time. Wait, all right. I'm going know. to... Uh, not going to press. That's not good, mon ami. <laughs> Stay back away hard, from right? me. Back up. <laughs> I hate everybody. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to... Uh, okay. I'm going to uh, just do a quick scan with my... Uh, virtuality goggles and see if there anything around here happens to be an access point for Any the net within points. the train. Okay. Uh, roll uh, scan. Scanning. 10 uh, for a 14. You rolled a 10? Yeah, I rolled. Oh. So you get to roll it again. And a 2. So that's 16. All right. You are detecting the presence of three access points Ooh. on this train. Uh it feels like there is one uh, in the next car, in the car after that, and in the driver's car. Right. Looks like we got four cars. I think we can pretty safely get into the net here if we get into the next one. Everybody ready? Did those guys have anything on them that was useful? Or? Yeah. They had a, a, a poor, poor quality, very heavy pistols. Uh, and a pork, pork shoulder. They had, oh, no, they they all had a pork shoulder. They had, they oh, had planned for a potluck dinner at the end of this. Oh, I'm so <laughs> God, we ruined. Not only did we kill them, we ruined an amazing we cookout. <laughs> they have uh, rippers. You know, like the. I think they're like claws Ooh. that go in your hands that you can like go into melee with. Um, and uh, they had some very heavy pistol ammo. Um, if you want to add, you know, if you guys have very heavy pistols, you can add like 20 cartridges each. Uh, disposable cell phones. Uh, you can't take their tech hair. And they all had shotguns, but they were shitty shotguns. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lenny's going to grab like all the burner phones. He collects them. So just for parts. So he puts those in his little uh, fanny pack. <laughs> all right. Um... What do you do? There's a door leading deeper into the train. Going in. We're going in. <laughs> uh, Quig is going to step back and let's let uh, Yolo open the door. All right. I will. Uh, He's got that Yolo. sick melee weapon. <laughs> <laughs> got, the, got my sword drawn. I'll, I'll open the door. Jade and Ragbone on either side for you. And God, I love this artwork. It's really yes. cool. Another shout out to uh, Sean Makes at Sean Makes on uh, Twitter. Uh, he did not only the amazing portraits of these characters, but this cool ass map. Yeah. All right, Ron. Can we All just right. open the door? Is it just like a sliding train door, or is it like yeah, there's a electronically sealed? You can, 
like the old, like the old uh, MTA train from Boston to Haverhill. You just gotta <laughs> swing it open. <laughs> How many times did you throw up right in that area, Troy, between <laughs> the two cars? What a dime. No, I peed between the cars. I threw up on the track. <laughs> you ever pee between two a moving subway car? You never did that? I never no. did it. Uh, no. no. God, no. I, oh, I mean, I've done Kate, that. Really? No? Probably I think it'd be a, p- kind of hard for me. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, back in my younger New York years, sometimes you just had to go, and I would stand between the moving cars and pee onto the track. Oh, God. Not proud about it, proud of it, but... Uh, <laughs> not safe. The other option was to pee my pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not an option. So, it's Ron, really do you pee on the door before you open it? <laughs> <laughs> Asking for um, a friend. No. Uh, so you just I- crack it open? Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and crack it open. I get my my sword drawn. All right, you got that sword, which clanged off the crates in hand as you open the door. Sugar, I'm, gunk, 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 gunk. I'm going through. You it. see two uh, more crates, similar to the uh, crates that were in the car you were just in, but in this car. There doesn't seem to be any uh, guards. However, you do see a computer mainframe. There we go. On yes. the wall. Uh, all right, can I do a quick perception check just for any danger in the immediate area? See if anybody's hiding maybe behind that crate. Listen sure. for anything. Um, Wake it up. That is a 16 perception. 16 Seems- perception. Um, you don't really see anything. Seems legit empty. Um, yeah, it seems legit empty. Until a dragon comes back! <laughs> oh, no. Roll a for initiative. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I just That's had a dragon. sword in that. <laughs> really, really <laughs> took me out of the fantasy. <laughs> just he was hiding behind one of those crates. <laughs> I knew I heard That's a dragon cargo was. <laughs> Dragon's like, Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> you do like Bobby. 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 Uh, yeah, no, there seems to be no one in there. <laughs> All right, uh, Quake is going to move up to the mainframe, um, and he's going to try to Buzzing. interface with it. All right, it's time to jack in, which you can jack do from anywhere up to six meters away. Uh, the net in Time of the Red is no longer like you had to be right on top of it. It's all on your interface. Uh, obviously, you don't want to jack out unless you're safe. So you want to jack in. <laughs> yep, I'm going to use an action to jet- jack in. All right, I'm now. I'm going to put these two by the door in case someone comes through and we can get them. Okay, all right. Okay. And Lemmy's uh, going to crawl on top of the uh, further crate just to uh, get a bead on the door as well. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm still flanking. I'm still flanking. Yolo's got the back door. Uh, Jade and Ragbone flanking the door into the next car and Moto on top of the lead crate just in case while Quake zwaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
what the architecture setup is, maybe how many floors it is, and what sort of defenses that they have. Uh, okay. In order to do that, he's going to use uh, a an ability, uh, a net action called Pathfinder. Okay. He's going to try to get a picture of the architecture of the net. Okay, so you will roll your interface, uh, which is your you know, net runner uh, skill, plus a yep. D10, and you've got to try and beat a DV that I know. And this is your second of three actions. And we're going to keep you going three actions just in case I need to do something. Um, right. It becomes important later. So your second of three actions is the Pathfinder ability. A little homage to the game we normally play. Uh, all right, yeah. roll your check. All right. Pathfinder check. Oh my god, another 10, dude. Nice. Oh, nice. All right. And then a 1, so that's a 15. You use the analogy that they use in the book. I think it's a great analogy. Think of this as an elevator going down, and there are X amount of floors in this uh, mainframe on the hammerhead. You're trying to see how far you can see ahead before you start digging. You rolled really well, and immediately you see on the first floor, it's password protected. Right away. Right away. Shit. You just hear him <laughs> utter his breath. Shit. Uh, Yo, it's like, what, what, what? He's got a sword. All right. Third, third net action uh, in the Talk round. To Talk to me. He's going he's gonna to go into the cyber deck in his visuality goggles, boop, boop, and he's going to enact a program called Worm. Suddenly, Ooh. you see an avatar comes across his vision of the screen, a golden mechanical worm with glowing green eyes, and it starts to seep into this floor to give him a bonus on uh, his attempts to hack the password. I have a nerd erection. Just hearing you, <laughs> just hearing you describe how that image. works. That image uh, is awesome. Worm. See, I don't know anything I'm about the, worm, the not program. The nerd shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so that gives you a bonus to your check to try to hack this password? Yeah. So okay, that's, that's it. And then it would be another round. So if nothing happens yet, we start another round. Oh, that's right, because activating the activating that ability is your third action. Yeah. Nothing happens. We now go into a new round. You get three more actions. Now I'm going to use a net action called backdoor and attempt to break the password with, with a plus two bonus worm. with the help of my little golden green-eyed worm. <laughs> uh, here we go. That is a five on the die for an 11 against this password. You break through. Nice. I'm going to do another Pathfinder to see what's below. Okay. You're right, because I can much just sort of like keep access going. the next layer without going in blind. Right. I can. But we feels no like we actions. have time. I'm going to try to use another action to, to Pathfind. Uh, that is a 13. 13. Okay. Nine on the die. You see, quake, on, dude. <laughs> you can see. I rolled below a five tonight, except on re rolls after tens. I'm quaking right now. Yeah. <laughs> just quaking, <laughs> quaking in my boots. Quaking. Your options were: you can just you can move through the architecture freely; doesn't cost you any actions. But Quake, realizing that they have a little time, is going to pathfind. Why go in there and run into something without getting a heads up first? So you pathfind, and you see on the next floor are uh, two <clears throat> encrypted files. And then the floor after that, boom, you bump up against another password protection firewall. Okay. You have two more actions. Okay. He's going to slide into that second floor. Um, and then he's going to use um, a, sorry, how do I identify the file? Oh, ID. Okay. Um, so let's call it file A. He's going to use the ID skill. And it's spelled E-Y-E hyphen D-E-E ID skill. So he's going to try to identify one of those files. That's an eight. It's an eight. That is enough. <clears throat> um, the first file contains the Hammerhead's original cargo manifest. Uh, it has everything that was aboard the train, presumably when the Red Chrome Legion hijacked it. It seems like mostly gear, weapons, and equipment belonging to Militech. Um, so nothing surprising. Yeah, there. It, it, we're looking for what might have come in after. So he's going to move on to file B uh, okay. and attempt the same thing. This is the third action of the round. Uh, another ID check, a ten. Yeah. Okay. Plus oh, a three, yeah. so that's seventeen. Hot D. Oh, okay, what a hot D. Got a hot D. <laughs> The second uh, 
thing you find is a file marked for deletion. It's an outgoing message that is time stamped uh, in the last 24 hours. And it uh, looks to be a voice recording by someone named Phineas, P H I N E A S. And uh, you can play it. And you hit play, and it's like, we got to the scene. There were three NCPD patrolling the area. We got by them easily enough, but the train was guarded by a dozen punks we didn't account for. We ran into a few minor problems, lost a few good soldiers. Good thing membership is up these days. We're bringing the crates up north to our tech friend. I'm sure clockwork can get these opened up for us. Once we get these cracked, (laughs) the sights won't be bothering us anyone. The sights won't be bothering anyone anymore. All right, that's the end of that round. He's going to take this little, like, stick that he has, a little, like, USB stick that he has, basically. He's going to put it into the virtuality goggles, into the back. He's going to use a meat action to download that file. To save save a copy of that file. Okay. Scoop. And he's going to, you know, translate to everyone else like what he's seeing, uh, that, that the crates are here and that they're moving north to the someone called Clockwork. Anyone know the name Clockwork? Clockwork. Tech, like you, Moto. Uh, do I know, do I know a Clockwork? Can I do a knowledge roll for that local expert? Yeah, roll a uh, knowledge local yeah. expert. Ooh, Natty 10. Uh, oh, Amazing. my God. Oh, another nine. Uh, so that is a that is a thirty one. <laughs> thirty. <laughs> oh my god! He's your uncle. He's your best buddy. <laughs> That's Uncle you fucking Uncle Dan. Dan. That's he Uncle fucking his Dad in disguise. <laughs> That's his street name. That's like he's all Phineas. Uh, uh, yes, you have heard of Clockwork. Uh, he is sort of an infamous uh, name on the streets. He doesn't really answer to anyone. He is not uh, a part of the Red Chrome Legion. He's kind of a uh, tech merc for hire, uh, but instead of uh, killing people, he does jobs, very, very difficult jobs. Um, The thing about him uh, that sort of gave him recognition is he's a bit of a a sociopath. Um, Mm. And so after uh, kind of doing everything he could do in Night City to make a name for himself, he has moved to the outskirts of the city. He is not someone uh, people mess around with. Hey, this clockwork, he's a bad customer. He just doesn't get along in polite society, you know. He's not someone you want to mess with. He's out there on the fringes. Y'all are right around the uh, plate you and people might have run into him at some point. But, uh, he knows his stuff, but he's just, like, got no morals. All right. He's half listening, half moving forward. He's going to move into the next password, the third okay. floor. You move into it. Uh, first action, try and crack it. By the way, I said it was a meat action to save the file. I think it's just no action to save the file. It says it's not it a is. net action. Yeah, it's a free action. You yeah, can, it's a free uh, action to I save the file. I read it earlier today. It's like you can copy files for free once you ID them. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I am going to uh, attempt to backdoor the password. So hacking the password... Um, not as good. That is a, that is a nine. A nine just breaks through. Nice. Oh, <laughs> just <laughs> slips through. This mainframe is not, uh, didn't seem very complicated. Um, but you are able to crack that password. Okay. You keep um, moving through the Second action, I'm going to do a pathfinder. See what's beyond it. Ooh, that is a five. Very low roll. Ooh. Very roll, roll. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a one. So I rolled another one. So it, it's it's a four. Oh. Four total. Oof. Uh, well, you only rolled a, uh, a. You only had to subtract one. That could have got real ugly. Yeah, um, I rolled a natty one and a natty one back to back. <laughs> you, you barely break the password, and then you're just like, I can't see. I can't see the next floor. All right, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. I mean, if he can, like, get control of something on this train, it would be phenomenal. So he's going to risk it to see if there's, if he can get a system controller here 
uh, open a door, lock a door, look at a camera, something like that. So uh, I'm going to... Fuck, man. Fry the snake! There could be a serious <laughs> deadly trap here, but I'm going to go in. I'm, I'm just going to go past the password, Troy, to the next floor. Yellow. <laughs> I don't know I if I can just keep yeah. rolling Pathfinder tricks. It's, I probably can, but... I, yeah, I'm not. I was thinking about that too. I'm like, can you just reroll it? I, I feel like you can't. Uh, think of like skill checks. You can't reroll a skill check. You need someone else to do something to change the situation. I don't know if it works the same thing, but it seems kind of uh, strange. You could keep rolling them. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Is there is there a limit to how many floors are in there, or is it just like no? The, Ooh, you we don't, don't really you, know. You, you it's all know virtual space. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so you want to keep moving through the architecture? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the next floor and just and it's basically like picture like an elevator just shoop, and like these virtual <laughs> doors open and what is on the other side? Something that can only happen to old Joe oh, O'Brien. Of course, <laughs> of course. You walk directly into the black ice known as a hellhound. Oh my god, oh, it's no. the most dangerous one in the game. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. In terms of what hell you hound, see, Valley. In terms of what get you him out, see, get him out. Uh, when you go down into this virtual space, you see a huge black metal wolf, and its uh, eyes are glowing white, uh, and fire runs in ripples all over its body, and it's just speaking in a grating, metallic voice, and it's just saying, Quay, 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 because it can just read you from uh, oh. the fact that you've jacked in. Oh, God. Here's what happens, and this could be be very very dangerous oh god you're gonna roll to see if you can beat its speed so you are basically let me get my notes here uh if you fail this check you automatically take its uh damage so you roll your interface plus a d10 plus any speed bonuses you may have from active programs yeah, see, I wanted to ask. I, I should have activated this. I just forgot it because I'm stupid. But I have Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, oh, Gonzalez. you have to. You have to activate that. Well, I would have activated. You know what I mean? Like if I knew what I was doing, I just didn't like remember I, before I would even go in. I would, there's no cost to activating it. You know what I mean? I right, would have just right, right. activated it. But and it just adds to your speed. Is that what it is? I'm saying yeah. Quake. There's no way he would not have activated it. I just uh, forgot because I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> there's it, there's basically not something I decided to do instead of activating it you know what I mean like it's just sure 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 uh, yeah, I mean, but, it's, just, it's pretty deadly that's the thing you especially if you're just walking blindly through an architecture you would never not activate that so go ahead and give yourself the bonus um, it's not like in, if you were harried if all of a sudden uh, the doors opened up and people started firing at you and you were in regular rounds with your party then maybe I'd say oh, sorry man that's an action's an action but in this yeah. case go ahead and say, give yourself the bonus yeah it's a that's, very small yeah. bonus it's not that's gonna okay. matter i'm still in unbelievable amounts of trouble i can't believe this train is a hellhound on the third <laughs> do you want me to give you floor. the dv roll its speed first see if you beat it uh sure yeah let's let's really up the stakes yeah now i would say in this case you are the defender because it's attacking you uh, -huh. uh so ty goes to the defender if it matters in this game uh i don't know if that's how it works here but i'm gonna say ty goes to the defender okay okay Okay. That is a one on a D10. Oh, huge. Oh, huge. Oh, so huge. you have to beat a seven. So, okay. Oh, All right. okay. I got it. Yeah, I've got a good shot then. Totally got it. And this. I rolled a nine on the die nice. oh, yes. for a 15. <laughs> I so, rolled a one. I was like, is that a seven? It was a one. So you would have. T oh, God. So we actually had the same bonus. So <laughs> with, with that program, I have a plus two. So we had the same bonus. So it was just our D10s against each other. <sighs> oh, man. Holy shit. But it doesn't matter. This thing now goes into initiative. And now yes. it's like straight up fucking combat. <laughs> Uh, all right, so basically had it won its initiative, it would immediately done damage to you and then move to the top of the round. In this case, your speed won out, so I think you get to act. How many actions do you have left? I believe I have one action, no, uh, two actions left, because I think that the, the back door 
was the first of that new set of actions. I believe you're right, and I'm not counting Speedy Gonzalez uh, against you. So your options are to uh, attack it, like try to zap it, um, and uh, try to get its it's de-res it basically it's yeah, hit points yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, it's res or you can try to slide away from it uh, which if you succeed you get to the next level of the architecture and then if you have enough mo- uh, enough actions left you can jack out cleanly but if you slide out and don't have enough actions on its turn it just chases you through the architecture and can attack you so you, you need to slide away and have an action left to jack out or you can try to go after this thing but if you don't kill it it comes after you. You know hellhounds are pretty tough, but man, what's on the end of this? <laughs> oh, yes, I know. What are they <laughs> hiding? That's the this thing. This is the risk. It's hiding? life or death, though, because if this thing hits you, it could fry your brain. This well, game is so uh, hard. Well, let me give you a little picture of what Quake is willing to risk. His best friend, Zoe. Zoe. Was set up by this gang, framed for a crime she didn't commit because she joined their ranks and then saw what they were doing saw the, the 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 seeds of fascism that they hid from her initially and tried to get out they wouldn't let her out so they framed her for a crime she didn't commit and she's currently in jail in brain dance completely zoned out of it and quake has sworn revenge he's w- working on gathering the information this recording in particular that's going to be key, pivotal. If he can place it in the right place, if he can get the right data from them, he can frame some of their top leaders for crimes that'll put them all away before he moves on to saving Zoe. So he hates everyone except Zoe. (laughs) What is the point of continuing this miserable life if he can't save her? And this is his best chance to get this leadership out of his way. So he's going to risk it. He's going to go after the hellhound and try to hack through it. And it's going to be so freaking deadly. This is going to be the scariest uh, net challenge he's ever come up against. Uh, But he's going to go into his cyber deck. And suddenly you see within the augmented space in the offhand from where he's holding his fucking very heavy pistol. You see an electric glowing katana comes out of his hand and he slices at the hellhound with this katana a program called sword uh because the hellhound is a black ice program right yes so uh he will attempt it's so great because this is all happening in a virtual space like it's not really a sword it's a program called sword but on the virtual space you're slashing at this thing with a sword yeah so uh you guys can't see this but you see that something changed his entire body tensed and now he's actually moving. It's like watching your friend, your idiot friend playing <laughs> VR uh, when you're on yeah, the outside yeah. of it. <laughs> so this is an opposed role. It's your attack plus my defense plus my D10. Yeah, this is... Uh, okay, so, yep, here we go. This uh, is... I'll, I'll give you the DV. I okay. rolled a nine. Ooh. Not great. Oh, total of nine. Oh, total yeah. nine. Oh, okay, yeah, total I got a nine. chance Sorry. then. I could, I could still fail, though. Uh, I rolled a seven. No, a seven. It is no an eight. An eight. <laughs> so I freaking miss with it. Oh, oh god, no. that's so bad. Oh, now no. activating the program and the sword going through was all one action, one net action. Yes, yeah, it's one net action. So he's got one more. And, and now we learned this before we started, like activating that program, you can't use it again until you use a net action to deactivate it and then another net action to reactivate it. So sword is gone. Sword is gone. Uh, so desperate so now. Bad. You can see the sweat coming down from the sides of his virtuality goggles. He's going to quickly again enact in his goggles the another program called Sawed Off. Which, by the way, I just made up. Uh, it is. I just. So basically, they they also like give you this freedom to sort of like be creative in the way that you draw up your programs. Uh, it has all of the mechanic. Everything mechanically is exactly the same as Sword, but I decided to change it to Sawed Off. And so, in his other hand comes a virtual Sawed Off shotgun that he flips around and then just blows into this thing's face with oh pixelated God. digital freaking explosion uh, goes off in front of it. So another, same thing, another attack roll. 
I'll so give you the DV. Ahead. And I'm, then I'm just a sitting duck. <laughs> All right. The DV is four. Oh, you got this. Oh, that can't be right. Yeah, it has a low defense. Decent oh. res. Decent okay. res, low defense. Res Decent res, low defense. Points, uh, all right, so I, that's an automatic for me. A nine. Well, man, if I got a 10, I rolled a nine. If I got a 10, I could. That, uh, again, mm, great place yeah. for a 10 to come. Yeah, I rolled uh, a, a two. Okay. It has a defense, too. So he does hit it with this virtual sawed-off <laughs> shotgun. Explodes in the, in the wolf's face, and it does 3d6 <laughs> damage to its res. Okay. Um, so yeah, just gonna roll that 3d6. Uh, I rolled nine, nine total. Nine points of damage. So you see the the uh, hound kind of reach back on its hind legs, but it does not go down. <laughs> and, now, <laughs> and now it will attack your brain. Oh God. So oh. this is gonna be again an opposed roll. It is going to attack you uh, and you get to roll your, uh, I wrote this down here. This could be so bad, dude, in so many ways. You get to roll your interface plus a D10 plus any program defenses you may have, uh, or, or like if you have anti, <laughs> anti black eyes or anything, uh, I think it's probably for you, unless you have any defenses. I don't know. Oh about. my God. I'm such an idiot. Yeah. Interface okay, plus I can't, D10. I can't keep going to this. Well, I need to play this differently from the beginning. I need to activate these programs that just sit there. I wasn't thinking about it. When you build your next Netrunner, you should totally... Oh, this is so <laughs> stupid. Why would I do that? Uh, okay. All right. Really bad. I'll roll my to hit, and then you tell me what you roll. Uh, okay. Oh, not a great roll. That is going to be a nine. Okay. Gives me a fighting chance, and I fail. Oh. <laughs> I rolled a natural right. two. So this oh. thing just like <sighs> takes a bite out of crime and you take four points of damage directly to your brain. Oh, oh God. There's, there's no armor for that? There's nothing that's... that's there is, blind. and I didn't activate it oh. because I don't oh. know how to play Cyberpunk Red. Oh. <laughs> but like now damage directly to your brain, is that different from regular damage? It is. It cuts. Yeah, it cuts right through any armor you're wearing. But I have an armor program that I did not activate. Uh, so I just was uh, thinking, and I could have activated it last round. Even I was just. I was is your cyber deck insulated? Uh, it is. It is. Okay. Yeah. Were so I was not, worried. I was yeah. worried that there might be a hellhound. So I built. In, so you might remember Huge. in the first episode, I said that I purchased a hardware upgrade that would allow me to not be forced out by another. Netrunner, so forced to jack out. So any program that forced me to jack out, that was only 100 eddies. What I ended up doing that I never said on air was just bought the rest of the hardware because they're each 100. And then I uh, was like, I'll just slot in whatever like the mission is. And then once we were going on the train, I was like, I don't need range. One of them is range. It increases it from six to eight. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to need it on the train. It'll be tight quarters. And then. Um, the other, I didn't think on this shipment there'd be like in a competing net runner. So I just sort of was like, I'm going to run the risk of maybe coming across a hellhound. And so I specifically did yep. insulated wiring is the only hardware upgrade I installed. Plus, a lot of the other ones cost two slots. Insulated wiring only costs one slot. Yeah. So if you weren't, in, if your cyber deck wasn't insulated, uh, it catches fire along with your clothing. And until oh, you spend a meat action to put yourself out, you take <laughs> two hit points damage every single round yeah. uh, at the end of your turn. Just burns it's so you alive. sick too, because like if you have to use that meat action, then you're not in the net doing anything to, and it's going to mm -hmm. just keep coming after you. I mean, so you have to jack out before you can try and put yourself out. Is that the thing? Like you take I think a move so, to jack yeah. out. Well, somebody else could do. probably put you out though too, right? Like one of us. If you just jack out without getting away from the hellhound, it does full damage to you again as yeah. you jack out. Oof, yeah. Man. Now, I think what you can do is you can trade your net actions for your meat action. So it's a choice you have to make. I think even sure. if you're jacked in, you can take your meat action to put yourself out, but then you just gave up your three net actions and the thing just goes after you again. All right, let's go right back to your turn. What are you going to do here? Are you going to fight? Now, there might not even be another floor. You don't know. But if there is, there might be something juicy there. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to stay in it right now. I'm going to use my first net action to activate my armor. 
program. So all of a sudden, shoo, shoo, around him comes this like gleaming white digital armor, like <laughs> almost like medieval style paladin, like paladin. armor. Yeah, but it's just nice. sort of like hovering over him. Uh, and then he is going to deactivate and reactivate the katana. And then once ah, again, try to nice. slice at this guy. Okay. So go ahead I'll, and roll your I'll give you the DV. Defense. Very, very low uh, chance here. Uh, that is going to be... Uh, I accidentally rolled... Uh, a D20. That, I rolled a D... Like a D100. Uh, that's going to be a three. Oh, okay. Uh, that's yeah, an really auto pass. I, I rolled an eight. Uh, <laughs> all right, so another 3D6 damage to this cat. Uh that's a much better roll. That's a 13 Ooh, digital 13 damage. 13 hit points left to de-resin. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Nice. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, oh. This thing was just slavering, ready to get you again, and you... <sighs> and it uh, just oh, huge. blasts. Oh, I'm so pumped. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. The oh no, you have no actions left, but you have no, no actions left in this round. Next round. Next round, I want to do a Pathfinder. I, I feel like the situation has changed. Can I re-roll it for the yeah. next floors? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You've got oh, I fail level. again. That's a five. Another yeah, natural yeah. one. Actually, I forgot to roll. So it's a zero. I just another fail. But I feel like that's the protection, so I'm just going to move down. All right, you move down and you see a control node. Yes. Yes. All right. yes. Now, do uh, I need to ID the control node or can I see what it controls? Uh, uh, you can I see. I believe I just see what it controls. <laughs> you see that it controls an automated <laughs> turret yeah. in the next okay. car. <gasps> Ooh. Amazing. Oh, All right, nice. so he's going to, so now he's going to turn to everybody and be like, I've got access to a gun in the next car. Nice. Hell yeah. Go in and get this started, and I'll start taking him out. <laughs> Classic. And he's going to stay Classic. back in this room. Well, let me give you the lowdown on how I think this works, because it may change your tactics. Oh, okay. So you can try to overtake and override this control node, and it takes about five minutes if you roll a successful check. Once you override it, you need to access the computer that controls the turret to be able to uh, like use it. This computer just overrides the controls and then where you already scan to find out there were multiple access points, you then need to be within six meters of that other access point to then control the turret. But they may not know that you already control it and it takes five minutes to do so. So if there are enemies in the next room, and they go over to try and use the turret, you just need to be able to jack in remotely and you can control it. But I can't jack in remotely at this uh, access point. I have to use the access point closer to the actual turret. Yes, the, the turret's access point. But I can spend point. the five minutes at this access point to take control of the node? Yes, if you roll a successful check. Okay. Do it. <laughs> Okay. It also has a DV. I don't have a bonus to this beyond my normal. Uh, that's a seven. Seven fails. Oh. But you're not any under any hurry here. Uh, I'm going to say that you just eventually get it. Yeah, I can just eventually okay. get it. Yeah. So eventually yeah. get it. It takes five minutes to do so anyway, so you just keep trying. You keep trying. Nobody's hiring you, and you gain control of this turret. <laughs> So now you just sick. need to get to the yeah. access point to actually fire it. But okay. now you have a sixth member of your team if there are Sweet. any enemies in that yeah. room. All right, so he'll explain this to the crew and then, like, let's not waste any time. I don't know how long I can control it. Oh, you know what? Before he jacks out, I'm going, after the, the control is complete, I'm going to roll a cloak check to just, like, erase my presence of having been in there mm -hmm. real quick. Sure. Um, that is a nine. Nine. Uh, yeah, that's enough to... Uh, well, that'll sit there. And basically, you roll a, a check. Like, if somebody else wants to check, it's against a nine. Right. If you're doing kinda, a Pathfinder or something like that. In a long-term <laughs> campaign, and then this may come into effect when we come ba play again, and there's a nine sitting on there. If he's trying to, like, wait, did somebody get into here? Who could draw the node? Right. Uh, you can also leave viruses behind as oh, you're jacking up. I know, but it's pretty cool. So cool. Uh, but you're just going to cloak and make it I'm seem like you were never there. And then there. last action, jack out. It wasn't a great cloak, so 
A no, good never runner would know someone's been in here. Of course, they're going to know when you take control of the turret. There's another door at the end here. What do you do? Um. All right. YOLO. Let's open this door, get in there, and I'm going to try to get to that note as soon as possible. We got access to another gun. Yes. Yellow through the door. I'm jacked out. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> God, I can see again. All right. Let's go. Yellow opens the door. Boom. Oh, oh no. Right. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. Okay. <gasps> you see, oh. sir, it wouldn't melt us alive. It's pointed right <laughs> it's at the door. door. Oh, oh my Jesus. God! Yeah, if you don't take control of that turret, they do, and they start firing at you. There are three mm-hmm. dudes similar to the grunts that you fought in the first room, and then there's a guy in the back that looks a little more serious. Ooh! Oh, jeez! Huh. I think that is straight out of the cyberpunk uh, video game. By the way, it looks pretty badass. That's what mm-hmm. he looks like. And he's like, Stop, oh, children have been And you see that these three crates to the north uh, all have very interesting locks on them. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, this is interesting. This is part of the Right. Okay. Awesome. So is it initiative time? Oh, yeah. it's initiative time. It's initiative okay. time. Let's dance. Uh, this is big. This is big here. Oof. It is Quake's turn. Or Qu- Quake's, what is your roll? Uh, sounds Quake's good. Turn? I'll take it. Yeah, just take it. No, <laughs> uh, uh, Quake rolled a 10. Bad roll. Bad roll Not for great. Quake. Uh, Jade. So Jade rolled a 2, and sh- so she has a 7. Oh. But then uh, Ragbone rolled a 10. So does he roll again? Yes, absolutely. I rolled again, and he rolled a 9. So 19 wow. plus. plus his dex is 24. That's what YOLO does. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why you can't roll it there. Initiative's huge in this game. Uh, all right, uh, Ron. Ron. Ron rolled a uh, 14, right? Uh, ref- reflex plus the, the D10 roll, right? Yep. Yeah, 14. Got a 14. 14 for YOLO. And what about yep. Moto? Uh, let me Moto. Moto, let me overclock on a 14 as well. A 14 uh, for uh, Moto. All right, so Moto and Ron, just give me a quick re-roll here. Opposed rolls. Natty 10. Four. Oh, no, All sorry. Right. Uh, uh, sorry, it came, come to the 10. Yeah, it comes to the 10. All right, so then uh, Moto will go first. But to kick things off, it's Kevin Ragbone's turn. <laughs> Kev. <laughs> Ragbone is flanked out to the side here with Jade. I'm going to say, you know, he understands the situation. He saw it right on Ron's face when Ron opened the door. Uh, Ron, uh, Ragbone is just going to walk right into the room and start firing. Uh, yes. What do you think, Jade? Fire at this guy in the back? Um, I would say get the spares. Okay. All right. Um, so fire right at this dude yes. to the left. Yes. Okay. All right. So go ahead and roll uh, once. So DV nine, 13. 23. 23. Ooh, nice. Nice. Definitely nice. a roll on fire. for damage. So that's four. Oh, God, I love Ragbone. <laughs> He's so four, badass. Eight. <laughs> 13. 13 points of damage. All right, that will ablate the armor. And I'll tell you right now, nine points got through. So that Ooh, guy got beautiful. hit pretty bad. Awesome. Uh, and Ragbone will stay right there. However, it is one of these dudes' turn. Let's see who I named number three. It is this dude up top here. This guy is just like a maniac. Ah! Just, let me see if I have the movement. Uh, oh, I only have a move four. Uh, so one, two, three. Die! Ah! runs right up at uh, Kevin Ragbone and tries to choke him. Uh, so this is going to be a brawl check versus uh, Ragbone's evasion plus a d10. Uh, so evasion skill plus your uh, dex. Uh, so your evasion base plus a d10 against this guy's a brawling situation. And he rolled a 15. Can Ragbone beat that? Oh, no. Nine, 11. Oh, oh no. no. This guy comes out and is like, ah! Ragbone. Maniac just grabs Ragbone in a fucking headlock. And it is Moto's turn. Moto is quick to the draw. 
All right, so Moto Lemp. So I want to like, I would love to jump down, fire at this guy straight ahead of me, and then move back behind the door. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. Okay, Absolutely, so. you can. She boom, suck it, boom. <laughs> Oh, Natty one! Oh no! Natty one! Oh, so you have to roll again and subtract! Oh. Uh, That's brutal. Six. It's, it's whatever, it's a miss. Oh, it's a miss, but right, you can so, move out of the way. Yeah. Oh, brutal. And you only have a one rate of fire? Yep. Alright, so Moto steps up. Boop, da, da, gun jams, and you step to the back. <laughs> it is Ron Yolo's turn. Oh, alright, alright. Um. I am, uh, I'm not even, so if I'm right next to Ragbone, do I need to use a move action as well? Uh, you can move to here, shoot at this guy, and then move back. Um, Cause I wanna, I, I wanna help, I wanna help Ragbone. I wanna I cut don't blame this guy. You. I, yeah, I so wanna... why don't you move to here, take one move, and then you've okay. got sort of a, a smorgasbord of uh, targets. But if you want okay. to go after the one that's holding Ragbone, go for it. Exactly, yes. So, so okay, I'm going to move there. I'm going to go after Homeboy trying to touch Ragbone. No, that's not Get happening. Get your hands off Ragbone. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, melee weapon, because I'm close. No, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, melee weapon. Melee yeah, you have weapon. Your sword out. Okay, yes, so this I, is going to be uh, brawl. No, not brawling. Your melee plus melee, a d10 plus, a d10. plus d10. whatever stat is uh, attached to that. Is it dex? Okay. Uh, oh, plus the dex. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Or your base. Your base melee. Oh, my base melee. Okay, so that's a ten, and I rolled a two, so that's a twelve. Twelve, and uh, mm. this is going to be an opposed roll here, I believe. Oh. Uh, my dex plus evasion plus a d10. Let's see if you get through. Eleven, you oh. do get through. Oh. Yes. 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 Oh. Return the favor, Ragbone. Smashes at this dude. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, so roll damage on your oh, katana. Three d six. Three d six. Here, hold up. All right, I got a four, a four, and a five. Oh, nice. Right. Oh, 13 so, points uh, of oh, damage. 13. 13. All right, so Two. you ablate his armor, and he takes some damage. That guy's in bad shape, too. Nice. Because he just got oh, hit nice. by a Beautiful. sword. Uh, do you get to swing twice? What's the rate of fire on the sword? Um, the melee weapon, I think. Hold on, I think it just says There the are one. some melees that have... Uh, rate, rate of fire of, fire. of two. Oh yeah, no, it says oh, heavy no, melee. Oh no, all melee combat is two. Yeah, all right, it's, so it's you get to swing melee. again. Yes, okay. Uh, so do I just roll damage? No, you have to roll to attack again oh, and see if attack. he evades oh, the second oh, okay. swing. Uh, I'll tell you right now what you have to beat. Ooh, I don't think you're gonna beat it. I rolled a uh, dip, 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 16. You gotta beat I'm a 16, y'all. Uh, I rolled a nine, no, a six. I rolled a six plus my base, right? Melee base. Yep. Uh, with my uh, melee weapon. That's a 10, so that's 16. 16, and I rolled, what did I say? I rolled a 16. Ty goes oh, to the defender, so you yeah. do not oh, hit man. him. Man. Oh, oh, brutal. I'm having so much fun. We're going oh, long. Uh, it is. Oh, I'm trying uh, to save this, do you want to move again, Yolo? Uh, um, yes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move over here. Okay. Just so Just I can kind of duck behind that first crate in this new car. Okay. Uh, this guy in the back here. They're all kind of maniacs. These are new recruits. They want to make a name for himself. So he's going to just start running. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, sees Ron there and is like, ah! Uh, he's going to keep running. Six, seven, eight. Runs all the way into the next car. He's crazy. Uh, Oof, geez. And that is, uh, that's his uh, round. He used two move actions to get in there. Uh, moving right along, it is Quake's turn. Quake, this guy ran up right next to you. Uh, but he's, he's a little out of breath when he gets to you. The fuck is this guy doing? Quake's just <laughs> going to, like, shove him out of the way and move past him. Hey, get back here, you blue-bearded weirdo. Uh, Quake wants to go past Ragbone and climb up onto this crate. Okay, uh, give me an athletics check, DV10. 
10 on the die. Oh, and nice. another 10. Nice. Oh, oh. And a five. Flip. That's like he over 35. Like float up yeah. there. Uh, yeah, uh. so he just like, <laughs> like leaps up to the top of this thing. And then I'm going to um, move when within the range. When you get on range. top of the crate, you see, there's a dragon! Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. You couldn't see it to get up there. He's still pissed about Bobby. He's <laughs> pissed <laughs> Bobby. Somebody said Bobby's hurt. Uh, uh, he's going to move to what he thinks is maybe about here. Uh, that would be six meters because of uh, the yeah. uh, Pyth- Pythagorean theorem, we'll say. Uh, so, yeah, you can access that turret from there. So, yeah, he's going to hunker down on top of this crate and crawl up to the edge of it. So that's that's his full action. To, that I'm going to use the run action. action for the second move. Yeah, you see that beautiful uh, computer. Thank you again, uh, at Sean Makes. Look at this fucking that's map in the top. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, all right, it is going to be the badass in the back's turn. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. He steps to the side, pulls out an assault rifle. Oh, my God. And is going to, uh, he's going to do something real bad. He's going to put on auto fire against Kevin uh, Ragbone. No. This oh. is very, Kevin. very bad. Kevin. Oh, no. uh, Kevin so open. With, a, uh, uh, with his poor quality assault rifle, he is going to do a shoulder arms uh, check that will uh, burn off 10 of his bullets. Uh, and I can't remember what the DR is. I'll find that in a second. But basically, oh, I think it's just the, the DR of uh, based on range. Yeah. So let's see how far away he is from Ragbone. One, two, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So the DR for auto fire from seven to twelve is, is 16. 20. 20 for an assault rifle for seven to twelve. Uh, page 173 in the core rule book. Assault rifle 7 fire, to 12, yeah. DV20. So he's got to roll shoulder arms against DV20. I'm, I, I'm literally looking right at it. No, that for auto fire, it's different than for single fire. Auto yeah, you're fire looking. DVs based on range, page 173, assault rifle 16, under 7 to 12 meters. Do you might not have the updated CRB? I have, uh, I'm looking at the. Uh, the yeah, yeah, right. for auto fire PDF. is 20. The lowest is 20 for, for the uh, auto fire. Hmm. Yeah, Joe, in the book, it does say 16, but they eroded it, and uh, I have the eroded PDF that I'm working off of. Oh, uh, okay. Do you want me to go with 16? No, I'll go no. with the, uh, the eroded version. <laughs> no, uh, no, if he hits Ragbone, this is what's crazy. The damage for every point that gets through Ragbone's armor it multiplies the damage by that number. So if four points gets through, it's XD6 times four damage to Ragbone. Oh. This could be real, real bad. Oh, come on. Auto fire, shoulder arms, DV20. I think that's why they eroded it. They're like, people are just dying left and right when you yeah. auto fire. <laughs> uh, let's see what his shoulder arms is. Oh boy. Uh, here we go. I needed to roll a 20, and I rolled a 19. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you yes, did. Man, too much. That's you awesome. put too much into 19. it. 19. <laughs> so much on it. Uh, it just, <sighs> brrr, 10 shots go out of the cartridge, and for some reason, uh, none of them hit Ragbone or the other boosters. Ragbone is living uh, his best life. <laughs> and then he is going to just move back into cover. Uh, Quake, did you stealth up there or no? Uh, yeah. I didn't roll it. I was just sort of like, shh, 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 but uh, okay. Yeah, I never rolled it. All right, um, go ahead and roll me a stealth just to see where we're at here. Uh, that is a twelve stealth. Twelve stealth. Okay. Moving on. It is Jade's turn. Jade. All right. I see uh, Kevin Jade. having a hard time with this guy, so I'm going to pop out of here. I think. Do I have to go? He- here in order to be able to hit him, or can I do one back? Uh, one you can you can shoot through the doors here. Okay. Yeah, like if you just want to move one space straight down, you can hit him. You're six meters away uh, with a pistol. That is going to be uh, DV thirteen. Okay, I'm gonna be right here just in case, but I'm gonna try okay. to hit um, the guy who's uh, all up on Ragbone. Yeah. Okay. Get yeah, you gotta boy. protect Get your, your bodyguard. 
I got one. You so, rolled a one? Minus one. It's a ten. Or it's, um, yeah, a ten. Miss. <sighs> Miss. Well, I have two. Oh. I'm going to try one more time. Yes, try one more time. Him. Come on. Get him. Come on, Jade. Fourteen. Fourteen hits. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. All right, roll that damage. One, Take six. this guy out. He's gonna kill Redbone. A one and another six. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's a critical. All right, give me the full damage first. Your boy. Thirteen. Your... Thirteen points of damage. Uh, all right, that is actually enough to kill him. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, his armor was ablated to three, and he had ten hit points left. So that is exactly enough uh, to kill him. Uh, <laughs> just for shits and giggles, roll two d six. Five, eight. Eight. Uh, that would have been a broken leg. A minus nice. four to move. Uh, so he'll be moving slow in hell. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're kind of clustered, so I will take one step back. I love that you can do that with no penalty. You just come in, kill the guy on Ragbone. Ragbone now feels like he's got his composure again. I get, um, what's it? The, uh, y- you make your employee like you. Uh, a loyalty, right? Loyalty. I get loyalty for doing Ooh, that. I'm pretty sure. Oh, loyalty nice. points. Yeah, that'll come yeah. up at the beginning of next session when we talk about uh, you guys leveling up if you survive. It is the one remaining uh, gang dude, one remaining red chrome guy. He is going to pull out his shotgun and fire at Jade. (laughs) DV13, shoulder arms. Here we go. Mrs. Jade! (laughs) Still really shitty with the shotgun. Some of these should hit. It is uh, astounding how badly I'm rolling. These are new recruits. They've been given the train job. Uh, So he misses. Top of the next round, it goes to Kevin Ragbone. He is no longer grappled, and Ragbone is like, nobody shoots my Jade. (laughs) (laughs) And he will take a shot at this guy. Uh, Give me a shot, DV13. I mean, he's, it's 14, his handgun, and, and he got an eight. So oh, he so uh, nice. the key is, though, if he rolls a one, it starts subtracting from it. Right. Uh, so it still has a chance to miss. In this case, he hits. Give me the damage. Three, four, so seven, right. eight. Well, take no miss. Uh, 13. 13, Again. and he is dead as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, two shit. guys nice. down. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, two to go, the one that ran past into the next car. I'm gonna have him car. move, or do you, or do, do you wanna control him? Uh, yeah, no, what do you tell him? I kinda want him to move up towards the main guy and help out with that. Okay, Oof. Ragbone looks back and is like, <laughs> All right, boss. And he just moves <laughs> to, 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 just all the way right, right up in this guy's face. Oh. Stay away from the turret. <laughs> For Christ's sake, Ragbone. Oh, yeah, Ragbone would know about the turret, so he's gonna like, I'm going to give some space. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant. I'm going to give the turret room to breathe. I don't want to die. I want to go down <laughs> in this trade. I kind of wanted to just like close the distance a little bit so there's no penalty to shooting him later. Smart, yes, uh, but he is aware, obviously, the quake hacked in, and so he doesn't want to get in the range of this turret. Uh, all right, it is uh, the gang member number three, but is he already dead? Oh, I've got a headache looking at all these things. Uh, <laughs> number no. three, yeah, the first one, he's dead. Number three is dead, and it is instead Moto's turn. Uh, hello, Moto. Go, Moto. What do you think of Lemmy? Uh, Lemmy is gonna run down around this crate and try to grab this guy's gun out of his hands. Ooh, Ooh, nice. 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 I love it, and Lemmy. And if you That's roll a successful move. grapple against his evasion, you can take the gun away. I'm gonna give you the DV here to see if you can beat it. Uh, okay. So it's his uh, evasion, right? Uh, yes. Okay, the DV is nine, terrible. Uh, 14. 14. Yeah. 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 So you're just like, oh. yoink. So cool. And, and you get it. his crushed uh, it. shotgun. What is it? He's got a shotgun? Yeah. So he just comes up and he's just like, give me that, you bastard. Just boom, just snatches it right out of his hands. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? Uh, and then do I get another melee attack? Uh, 
I don't think so. Does it I think grapple we use, a melee attack, or is that is that different? Grapple is its a grab is its own action, so okay. that's its uh, its action. But you do disarm this guy. Uh, uh-huh. You see, he does have those ripper claws, uh, so you want to deal with him before he gets to use those. It's Ron Yolo's turn. Oh. Ron, you see that there's the security op guy in the back here. I call him security op because that's his template. Quake's up on top here. You know he has access to the turret. Ragbone's here. Moto has this guy's weapon. I don't know if you know that unless Moto yelled it out. You got some options. What do you want to do? I think, well, so, yeah, uh, Lemmy shouts. So he says, no, of course you're gone. What are you going to do now, you bastard? So... You might Come on! Surmise. Can He's I... just like waving in his face. Can I take an aim at uh, Lemmy's guy? Uh, take a uh, shot at Lemmy's yeah, guy. Yeah, you're going to have to step right so uh, two I gotta, paces I gotta right. down. Yeah, yeah two and then I'll let you here. shoot through your buddy. You know, okay. I, I, they say if you don't have cover, you can't shoot through it. I don't know what the rules are for shooting through your allies. Um... Yeah, I tried looking it up. I couldn't find anything. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know like what? No, I'm gonna say the, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow shot. the golden rule of cover, Ron, and say you can't shoot through your ally. If there's oh. something blocking your shot, you can't okay. do it. And there is something blocking your shot. However, you do have the move space to get to like the console if you wanted uh-huh. to. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Then that's what I'm. Wait, then I'll have to. That'll be my turn once I make the second move or no. Uh, no, because you, you, what's the full complement of your move stat? Oh, five. Five, oh, one, two, yeah. You've yeah. got plenty of space, and you've got a sword, so you want to get right next to this guy anyway. Yes, okay, all right, so I'm going to move Ron. right up on him. Exception. I'm taking a, yes, I'm taking all a right, you got to be GV15, Ron. Uh, GV15. To, yeah, he rolled a really good evade. Can you all hit right, him? All right, then I'm going to use my melee weapon. Okay. Right? Uh, and and uh, okay, my melee base is ten. I'm rolling. Roll over a five. Four. Oh no! Oh, God, run. But you got one more attack. Rate of fire is two on that Wait a sword. Minute. Oh yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Rate of fire is two. Joe? What about a little luck? Oh, 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 oh yeah, we have luck. We're never yeah. playing this game again. Spare. Mine as well. Use it. Yeah, that's it. I, uh, can I add luck to the first hit? Let me do that. Absolutely. You add okay. two yes, yes. points of luck, reduce your luck by two, and that is a hit. Roll damage. You got How much luck do we have? Nice. Nice. Everyone it's has different luck. I, I have seven luck, so I just used oh. two on that one. So I'm good. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm now rolling damage. Yeah. I, thought it was like like team, I thought it was like team luck or something. No, no it was no, like no, Star no. Wars RPG. This is amazing. <laughs> so I got a four, a one, and a three. So that's what. Uh, eight, Nine, points eight. Eight, 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 eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. All right, so uh, a few points get through, and you ablate his armor, and you've got uh, another attack because okay. the rate of fire is two. Right, okay, boom. Here we go. We're rolling. Eight. Nice. Eight, eight, eight plus, plus uh, melee 18. weapon. Oh, 18. Boom, baby. Boom. And I rolled a nat one. That is a definite hit. Roll oh, damage. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Dude. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, get it. All right. Yeah. Ooh, I you got really six. are rolling two pretty sixes. bad. Two sixes. You got two sixes. Yes. Two critical. Two sixes. Yeah. Uh, so, how many sixes do you, I mean, how many dice do you roll all together? Uh, I just rolled two. And I got just two d six on a sword. Y- yeah, it's three d yeah. six, right? Three d six. All right, so roll three, one more six. Roll, uh, roll one, more. one more d six. One more d six. I got. A, I got a five. Nice. All right, so that's seventeen points of damage. Nice. Uh, now roll two d six. Okay. Seven. Uh, Seven. Four to three. All right, so this injury is for an object. At the end of every turn, when you move further than four meters on foot, you re-suffer this critical injury's bonus damage directly to your hit points. So I, I'm thinking that, like, the, a shard from your blade stuck into him, yeah. and he's just like, God! Oh. Nice. A little, I love it. little, you know what? When you hit that crate earlier, maybe it chipped your sword, yeah. and now that you hit him, that chip has gone into him, and he's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> uh, this guy is in really, really bad shape. Yes. And it is his right. turn. And he's like, what the fuck? And he goes to back up. And that takes enough hit points for him to die on the spot. Oh, yeah. 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 Amazing. Oh, how yeah. 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 on the spot. Yeah. And Lemmy, oh, like, throws yeah. his own shotgun at his corpse. God. <laughs> As he bleeds but, out. Oh, it. Wow. it is Quake's turn. 
And then it's that dude who almost just lit Kevin up. <sighs> oh, wow. All right. What do you do, I want to I want to pitch a retcon uh, based on <laughs> net running that Quake would, would know that we don't. All right. So. Pitch it. I was just, I've been reading. All I've been doing is reading and <laughs> DJing. When you <laughs> DJ. jack out, it resets the entire architecture and all the defenses go back. All the defenses oh, reset. Okay, no. Now, um, taking control of that node, you were saying that rolls over. I don't see any reason why we can't do that. However, um, everything should reset. I think that I could stop it, though. With time and with all the stuff that we had going on, I think that Quake could plant a virus that turned off the passwords and the hellhound for like a five minute window so okay. it's like a not super difficult virus but something that he could plant that would just give it like a blip in the grand scheme of time to just be off temporarily and he could take time and multiple actions to do it it's just about the dv if he was successful or not and he right, could, uh, you know, give me that uh, after the fact roll, and I'll let you know if it worked. All right, <laughs> I really need this one to be. I guess it's such a big ass. That's on, pretty. That's going quake. Come on. eight. That old boy, eight. I'm going to tell you that I believe is going to be enough. I'm going to go by what the highest DV check was on that computer. And the highest was an eight, so that is going to yes. be enough to nice. uh, leave a okay. virus behind. Okay, uh, so then that will allow. I don't him... know if that's how the rules actually work, but we're just you know playing no, along no, no. with all this. All viruses say. are one hundred percent determined by the GM oh, okay. because all viruses are made up by the player. There, Great. there aren't like a, a, like a table of viruses. They just give you like some fun examples. Okay. Um, and the reason I thought that that one might be low enough DV is because it's a very brief window that it wasn't working. You know what I mean? If it was like, I, I shut off all defenses forever. You know what I mean? It's right. like. And also like, it's one thing if you're jacking in like you are about to do now in the middle of combat when like every action matters, you could all have, have taken time to do that. So yes, you left a virus on there. Uh, what do you okay, do great. now? So now he's going to jack it. So uh, yeah. jack in. He's All right. So you are foregoing your meat actions and you're using your three net actions you have jacked in. Visuality goggles. Jack's in. And now. <laughs> yes, minority report. I love it so much. All right. So he jacks in. And now here's what I'm. Here's how I think it looks. The system comes up. He knows the architecture now. The passwords are shut off. It's sort of like just a you know a blip in the security cameras, right? Like yeah. they're they're running on a loop for a second, and he is able to. There were two passwords and a hellhound. He can just zip past all of them right back to the control node. So one action to jack in, and he already has control of the node. So then it would just be a net action to operate. The turret gun. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you just start moving through the architecture and everything is like in stasis and you get down to the bottom floor and instead of a control node, you see a flamethrower. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? Just a digital flamethrower sitting there and you realize that the turret is an automated turret that is set up to be a flamethrower with incendiary oh. charges. Oh, so amazing. You can amazing. fire it at this dude and it is going to be, uh, you're basically, you're using your reflex plus a D10 plus shoulder arms and you've got to hit DV 13. If you hit, it's 3D6 damage and because they're incendiary shotgun shells, uh, it'll basically light him on fire and he'll take four oh hit God. points per round until he uses an action to put himself out. So, <laughs> reflex, awful. plus D10, plus shoulder arms, you gotta beat DV13. Do you have any shoulder arms? No. But, okay, that's but I right. feel it. But I feel like I should, I would like to make a pitch that I could use my interface in place of shoulder arms, which is four. You cannot. But you okay. can use your reflex and you can use luck. You're basically, you're a nerd that got in here and there's a weapon that is beyond your knowledge. So, so he's actually grabbing it luck. kind of in the AR space. Exactly. And he has to aim it 
and you guys and see the turret oh. turning in real space. <laughs> no, in meat the space dude towards that the guy. made dude just sees the turret like suddenly <laughs> spin. <laughs> No 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 <laughs> All right uh all right I should might have to use a little luck but let's get it Good luck use So it. this is just going to be uh, my base reflex here we go reflex plus a d10 reflex plus a d10 uh here we go that is a t- 10 so it was all 14 right. do you uh, 14 total No I rolled a 10 adjusted Okay. And I need 14. You need 14. So do you have four luck to burn? Got to. Come on. Oh, you know Quake's got the luck. (laughs) All right. I I have to right now. This is too much. I've got to see this guy go down. All right. Roll 3d6 damage. And if you roll two two sixes, uh, bad stuff's going to happen. And if I roll two d6s, I could crit. Oh, God. I would love to crit. Hold on. I think I see a little. Let's get a little. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Come on, come on. It's not a six. It is a six, but it's not a second six. Uh, that is 12. 12 points. 12 points. 12 <laughs> points of. Oh, God. <laughs> it just gets lit up. What is happening? 12 points of damage. Okay, so that will ablate his armor, uh, and he will take some damage. Um, and he is on fire. <laughs> so he'll take four hit points directly to his body every round unless he takes an action to put that out. Wow. Uh, okay, and that is um, that's the bottom floor of this architecture. That is it. Just the okay. flamethrower sitting there. Okay, so he has another. Uh, he to the has another one. net action, um, and so just in case he's going to activate armor, just in case the hellhound suddenly wakes up and he's not expecting it because he, you know, he's just okay. going to do that. So, the one thing I forgot is what I wanted one of these guys to do on their first round. I forgot I wanted them to go to try to activate the turret, and then they were going to be like, "Oh, it doesn't work!" And I just got caught up in the heat of the moment. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I you still get the benefit head. of it in that. Uh, you get to use it and they don't. Um, all right, it is that dude's turn. He is on fire. Oh, jeez. But he realizes that his whole crew is down. He realizes what's at stake here for the Red Chrome Legion. And he needs to go down uh, and take you with him. Uh, so he is going to step out to the side. He is going to remain on fire. And he's gonna try and hit Ragbone again. Oh no. On auto fire. Oh no. Wow, how many are in his clip? Uh, he has 40, so he can only wow. do this four He's times. He's gonna empty his clip. Here we go. Very, very tough chance here. Gotta, hit DV, gotta hit DV20. I'll tell you right now, just to lift the veil, I have to roll <laughs> a 10, a 10 on a D10, but I could do it. Because it's so much damage. Much more likely like than a 20 on a D20. It. Mm-hmm. Six, 16, he misses Ragbone. Uh, <laughs> Ten more shots come flying out of the clip. And he's like, da, 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 da. looks up at Quake and he's like, you're next. And he steps back to the side again, out of the way. It is Jade's turn. All right, Jade's going to head up here. I'm, I'm assuming this fire is gone. The fire is gone, yes, it's flavor <laughs> fire. And she's gonna do one shot at this guy. Okay, <laughs> right, slides up right next to Ragbone. You've got a rate of fire of two. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be DV 13. <sighs> it's a one. Yeah, oh, she's not gonna no. hit it. Oh, no. no. So I'm gonna try to use one. more of my luck. I've got five more and should I just go for a headshot again? Yeah, do Should it. Should I try? Yeah. Do it. Whatever. Okay, let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Well, well, I'll tell you this. His body armor, his ablated, his head armor isn't. Oh. So, so it might, you two. know, the, the good thing is the double damage, though. You get the double damage. So that's 13 minus eight is a five, and I don't have the luck to compensate. Mm. Yeah. You don't. So you went no. for the headshot and missed, mm. and that might end up killing Kevin Ragbone. No. Oh. It He's is gonna Kevin be Ragbone's fine, Kate. Don't turn. listen to him. Don't listen yeah. to him. I'm, for my move action, I hold his hand. We go down together. We'll go down Ragbone. together. <laughs> Ragbone just <laughs> looks down and then fires at the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's his Levels turn? a shot, and Ragbone will burn luck here to make oh sure he God. hits it. You know he what? He doesn't have luck. 
He doesn't have luck. I, no luck. Luck. I was going to oh, go for a headshot. All right, he's just going to fire off DV13. Can he hit? So he got a 19. Ooh. Ooh. 19 is Rag definitely a hit. Roll damage for old Ragbone. Two. Come on, Cam. I got a six. Uh, 12, uh, 16. 16 Ooh, nice. points of go. damage. A lot of that gets through and his armor is ablated again. All right, this guy's in bad shape, but he's tough. He's the, the boss of this, as far as you know, unless there's somebody through that last door. Uh, it is wrong. No, excuse me. It is uh, Moto's me. turn. Let me. Ragbone's uh, going to stay right there to leave the, the turret to be able to fire at this guy. I don't think I can... I don't think I can do anything because Jade and Ragbone are blocking yeah. me and I can't move past them. So yeah. he's just uh, hey, what's going on over there? Kill him, kill him. Moto yells up to you guys, a little encouragement. Will mm-hmm. that be enough? It is Ron Yolo's turn. Inspiring Ron, courage. You're, plus two. Ron, you're kind of in the same situation here. Can I, can I climb up on the... Uh, crate though can I do because I got five wait so it'd be one two three four yeah like give five? me an athletics check and I, I'd say you could get to the back here and uh, get a shot off on this guy okay All oh right. wait do you have you'd have to drop your sword and draw your pistol as you do that oh so that's another action so a move action no no free action to do oh, that free action okay yeah so I'm moving up here athletics check Yep, quick athletics, easy athletics for Yola. Was it 1d10? Yep, plus your athletics. Plus my athletics, got it. Athletics is, uh, base is, where is it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, base 12. Base 12 and I rolled an 8. You get up there easily. Nice, dude. Uh, And you drop your sword, you leave it by Moto's feet, and Uh, you pull out your pistol before you climb. Your pistol is out. My pistol is out take a shot or two. I'm taking the shot. I'm taking the shot. <laughs> this is going to be five, t- uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I'm going to add it two for the height. So it's going to be DV f- uh, you're 14 away with a pistol. It's going to be DV 20. DV 20, ouch. Okay, I just rolled a just roll the four and <laughs> I don't think you have plus 16. I don't, I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't I just, think you have I enough have luck a, either. A, uh, Oh, I have. So, a, oh, yes. Hold on. I have a handgun eight, and I rolled a four. That's twelve, and I have five luck left. You would need eight luck uh, to get the hit, eight. but <laughs> you have rate of fire two on your gun. Oh yes. Okay. All right. So take another shot. Maybe you'll get take closer to shot. twenty. Take another shot. Boom. It's five plus the handgun eight. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. Still too low. Man, the luck is key when you need it. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't get it. It is uh, Quake's turn. Quake, what are you going to do? Uh, he is going to... Uh, you see, like like a video game, there were f- like four lives, and after you fired off that incendiary, there's only three shotgun shells left. Okay. All right, so he's got another chance at this. He's going to fire off the flamethrower again. Nice. Uh, he's got to roll well, though. Uh, this is a tough shot. What did you say it was? 14, right? Reflex plus DT, D10 plus the shoulder arms you don't have versus DV13. DV13 now, because he's been burning all this time. Oh, yeah. Don't, I'm going to give him those four hit points. I forgot he takes four hit points worth of damage for not putting himself out. Go ahead. Roll <laughs> against DV13. Quake! Nice. I'm not going to do that. What? Okay. I'm gonna stay jacked in, but I'm just gonna shoot him with my very heavy pistol. In the meat okay. space. Yeah. yeah, in the meat space. Exactly. <laughs> Francis yeah. is getting it so good right now. In the meat space. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just it's just all overlaid, right? All this stuff. He realizes this turret is awesome, but it's a little unwieldy. The guy's already burning. He has a better chance of just. One shotting him if he can get this more damage off right. too. If you don't kill him, he might come after you next. I know. All right, here we go. What is it? DV thirteen. He's D- no. Uh, he's going to be eight meters away. Uh, two, four, six. I'm going to say. I'm going to say that's DV thirteen for you. Okay. Here we go. Uh, ten. <laughs> Plus oh. two, so that is a twenty-five. Next. Twenty-five. Uh, nice. <laughs> All right, roll damage. Can I get a crit today? Can I get a crit? No crits. Uh, 
It's 14 though. Well, it's not actually that great on 4d6, but 14. 14. 14, that's decent. Is not enough to kill him. No, I thought he needed no. a D- I thought it was a DV13. No. Oh, yeah, you, you hit him. You did a lot of damage, but he's got better armor than the other guys uh, and uh, more hit points. He's in bad shape, but he's going to get at least one more round here. Uh, he realizes that the assault rifle is just not working. It's a cool weapon, but it's not helping him out. So he's going to take two shots with his very heavy pistol. First shot's going to be at Quake. Oh, oh, dude, I'm definitely getting hit. Oh, man. If this guy's going to die, at least maybe, you know, faint and rep and it adds so much that's why cool is a stat in this game maybe he'll, they'll tell stories about him well at least he killed one of Hornet's crew so he's going to take a shot let's see what his uh, handgun proficies alright here we go DV 13 and I rolled a one yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that is no much. one's gonna remember you after this. That's the first attack. Nice he gets, he's got a rate of fire. Two. Wait, no, it's a very heavy pistol. He only can shoot uh, once. He gets one the shot. He gets the one one shot. He missed his oh, chance God. to blow. I had a plus ten to that roll, oh. uh, and instead he misses. It is Jade's turn. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Uh, Jade, Jade, this guy is just going to stand right there. He realizes he's cornered. He's missed every opportunity. What do you do? Jade, the exec. I try to Finish. shoot him with my gun. Show me what you got. Finish 13. Him. 13 total. Let me get to the map. That is a hit. Yeah. Nice. 3d6. A 3. Six, seven, and I'll do one more. Oh, that's a 10. So nice. 21. Nice. And- 21 points of damage on how many D6? Oh, no, 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 no. it was seven points of damage and then I'm rolling again to hit and I hit a, I did, I hit a 10. Oh, seven points of damage the first time and then mm-hmm. the second time, what was your to hit? I rolled a 10 on the dice for a 21. Oh, another hit. Roll so the damage. Three more, got two. Seven, nine. And he right. falls. Yes. 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 I killed oh the baddie. Shade can't stop Bad. killing dudes. Yes. Yes. Gets them. This one's a killer. I just love it with her like little glasses that she just like. <laughs> no one will remember you. Poof. <laughs> no one will remember you. What a great quip. And he so falls. Good. So good. Sick. You see to the north here, there are the three crates. They have to be the crates that Hornet's after because, Moto, the second you come back into the room here, you see they have those cool encrypted locks on them. Locks that only someone like Clockwork could open. Now that you know they're working with Clockwork, you realize this is serious. There is a door uh, leading to what you would assume is the driver's car because based on Quake's scan, you found three access points and you saw that the next one is within this range. Um, But you're on a ticking clock. You need to get these crates back on Hornet's train. What do you do? What do you do? (laughs) Should we stop the train? And we can tell our friend. Can we do that? Is that something we can do? Can we control yeah, anything? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, can I look in the architecture, see if there's any control node for the train or the train's automated? Roll a scan. Uh, that is a nine. Uh, all you know is there's an access point in the next room. I might be able to control it from the next room, and we won't know until we're in there, though. <laughs> so we got to go in. <laughs> uh, I am going to put in a virus to... Uh, just remove the remaining rounds on the turret gun. Okay. Uh, just to empty its clip. So just... Yeah. You see the the uh, video game flamethrower just fizzles. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to jack out. <laughs> and you take 4d6 damage to your brain. Uh, as the flamethrower ignites you from the inside out. Uh, all right. So what do you guys want to do? We only have a couple minutes car? before. We only got a couple minutes for these for that hellhound is back up. So if, if I need to jack in up front, we got to go now. All right, let's go. Let's go fast. Moto. There you go. Uh, Flying it. Let me open the door. Let me open the door. 
Let me open the door. I'm gonna hold up my very heavy pistol through the doorway. <sighs> and you see, sure enough, the driver's car. Uh, it's immediately apparent uh, the train is using automated controls. There is no driver. Yes. Yolo. Nice. This is your bread and butter here. This okay. isn't about jacking in so much as it is driving a fucking train. Yeah. Driving a motherfucking train. <laughs> this is what the nomads space. do. Conductor yeah. uh, yo, uh, YOLO. Conductor <laughs> YOLO. All aboard yes. the YOLO train. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, on the board. Well, there's the end. Uh, the title. Yeah. All aboard the Let's YOLO train. <laughs> Ron, you get up there. You've you've done this before. You you oh, know yeah. this might be a little bit different from the the trains you've worked with, but like this is your jam. This is what this, you are built this to looks do. This is like a BX nine thirty eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't no know they problem. still made this. <laughs> <laughs> You look at the controls and you realize if you do nothing, you're, you assume this thing is just going to pull into its destination as planned. Uh, it's going to pull into its destination with, uh, you know, half a dozen dead gang members and hopefully no crates on them. Ron, you also know with a drive land vehicle check, you could operate the controls to either uh, stop the train. Um, you would assume Elijah would get the signal and stop the train as well uh, Hornet's train uh, or you could pull it off into another track you kind of can do whatever you want your other option is to just grab those crates and get back onto Hornet's train because you are on a ticking clock here you are in real time right Right. what do you guys want to do let's Ron, just grab the crates if there's a way to grab the crates let's just do yeah. it yeah yeah I mean I'm guessing it's not going to be any easier or harder if I like slow down the train, right? Like, it's, it, like if we stop the train or slow down I the train. I think it'll be easier if we stop it. Yeah, we won't yeah. Have I the mean, danger of dropping the cargo or falling off in the transfer. Yeah. That's what I'm Let's thinking. Just stop, make the move, and then get the get yeah. out of here. And then get, yeah. and then I can set it on autopilot back to where it's supposed to go, and they can take the set dead, it on auto destruct like all over. trains have got auto destruct. We'll set it. Yeah. All right. Do you guys want to try and signal? Elijah to let him know this is happening because if yeah. he sees the train, no, it's easy. Yeah, we just oh, tell him. Oh, that's we right. Him Jade. Yeah. yeah. Jade, what do you tell Toots? Um, <laughs> that's going to be uh, <laughs> slow down. Paging <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Toots. Paging Dr. Toots. Toots over and out. That's a slow down a firm. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a slow down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Kate. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. <laughs> it's going to be a slow down. It's going to be a slow down. It's going to be a slow down. Breaker 1-9. Yeah. <laughs> Toots reads you over and out. Uh, Ron Yolo, I'm going to need a drive land vehicle check from you. Do you have any skill points in drive land vehicle? Yes, I would assume I a do. nomad does. I do. In my, uh, in my skills here... Right what is your vehicle. base? Um, where is that? That's under my techniques? No. Hold on. Yep. And Control skills. skills. There we go. Drive land. Base 12. Base 12. Base 12. All right, Ron. Um, you got a really good chance here. Do not roll a one. If you roll a one, <laughs> bad things are going to happen. Don't you tell me what to do. All right. <laughs> uh, I rolled a nine. I rolled a nine. Oh, yes. yes. So Ron I'm driving just... the hell out of this train right nice. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> it alerts the entire outskirts of Night City uh, to this. The train yes, grinds to a halt. If you look out the window uh, on the north side of the car, you see Toots give you the thumbs up as he brings Hornet's train to a stop as well. Had you guys tried to take these crates and like throw them across or jump across with them, there's different athletics checks. I have the DVs based on whether you're throwing them or uh, jumping across while holding them. Uh, in this case, it is an easy, take your time, slow transfer uh, of the crates. Yes. On. So freaking cool. To uh, Hornet's train. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then, what do you want to do? Do you want to just leave this train here? Or, YOLO, do you want to try and roll another check to send this guy on its merry way to its destination? Yeah. No, I want to send send him back to, to Papa. 
All right. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit more difficult check because I need you to drive land vehicle, but set something in there that's going to give you enough time to get off and get back on into Elijah Ooh. Toots's train. So okay. I'm going to say that Jade and uh, Quake and Moto and Ragbone are already aboard. Okay. And they're just hoping that Yolo st- <laughs> still got the skills. Oh, and, sorry. Oh, hold, hold on. Hold on. But before I leave, I want to try to leave a virus in the Ooh. in the system that. Uh, will just very simply uh, uh, give a recording. uh, Actually, no, that's not what I do. I I just want to leave a virus in the system that is going to make it seem like somebody I know from this gang, one of these guys that I have recordings of, like I'm holding the recording. Right. I'm going to make it sound like one of these guys was here. So sort of like basically a higher up from within their own organization was here without authorization and make it seem like an embezzlement job. Like somebody that okay. was in the gang Enough actually of stole the shit. Okay, that like it makes it seem like it was an inside job. That yes, they, uh, exactly. The exactly. Red Chrome boosted but their How own else guys. could they know that it was going to be right here at this time? It's, it seems like an easy sell. All right. While you roll that check to leave that virus, that's a tricky virus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a little bit of a higher DV. I'll tell you what the DV is before you roll it. Um, but Skid, what did you want to do, Moto? I just wanted to search the boss because we never. I don't think we searched him. So, oh. okay, you search the boss <clears throat> and you see on his person uh, a couple interesting things. He's got his, you know, uh, crappy little uh, pistol. Um, Heavy, you know, a very heavy pistol and a poor quality assault rifle. Um, he's got like a, a knife on him. Uh, he's wearing Kevlar armor, which has been lit up. Um, but if that's better than any of your armor, you might want to take it and uh, repair it before your next score. Uh, but you do find two interesting things on his person. You find a pair of smart glasses ah, uh, and a chipware socket. Oh, oh hell yeah oh Ooh, dude that's wait, 500 so that's eb free. and i was yeah. looking at that that's shit free. roll off i take want the those knife. glasses yeah I toss the glasses to jay to say yeah let's see if those how those fit and he takes his knife and he digs the chip socket out of his neck <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that that guy's amazing. Amazing. I'll be that. That's that. thank you that's so much awesome <laughs> <laughs> that, chip, that chip socket. So, for people that don't know, it is it is basically the thing that you implant in the base of your brain, so that you can do so many different. You can add so many different modifications to your neural network. Uh, it's a really cool base mod that you need for a lot of cool upgrades in cyberware. Mm-hmm. But he's got to get a doctor, Ripper Doc, to, to put that in, right? Or something. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, I think it's a clinic or I think it's a clinic somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Serious, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure Moto's got some connections that will play out <laughs> at the beginning yeah. of next session. Uh, in the meantime, roll, I'm going to say DV13. That's a tough virus to leave behind. It's got a lot of moving Ooh. parts. Yes, okay. DV13 almost certainly will fail, but he's, he doesn't have a lot of time. So he's going to push <laughs> it and try to do it. Have to get a really lucky roll here. YOLO, get your drive land vehicle check ready. Got it. Uh, I got a nine. You said 13? Yep. I have three luck and one short, so I can't do it. Oh, man. He's just like, I, 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 I can't get it. The system's too strong. System's so you try to get it, and you're like, I burned, you burned your luck. I mean, that's the, yeah. the cool thing about mm-hmm. luck. You, it comes when you need it, and it's not yeah. there when you need it. So it did, uh, did not work out. So now, you know... Uh, he's got a nine cloak sitting in, in there, so like they might know, they might find out who did this. I don't know. A good net runner would be able to maybe trace it back to you. But yeah, you have... if they hire somebody who could, I'm so sure it's uh, scary, dude. It may not be the worst thing if they know it was us, because that might be good for our reputation. Let them yeah. try to get us. Yeah. That's Might how be. things go in Night City. But yeah, this no. train, if YOLO pulls <sighs> oh this God. off, is going to pull into station. And at a certain point, call, phone calls are going to be made. Where's the shipment? Clockwork's been waiting. Why isn't it here? Let's go to the uh, train station and figure it out. YOLO, give me that driveland vehicle check. All right. I got uh, I, I got, I got my driveland vehicle base 12. I rolled a 7. That's a 19. Psh. YOLO sets it. You hear it go... <laughs> and you get off in time <laughs> shut the door and the train just pulls off into the distance <laughs> yes. amazing dude uh, so you get back on the hornet's train you're watching out the window as this train just goes off into its destination and uh, Toots looks back at you some of you are covered in blood you're all sweaty 
uh, some of got you in real life. Got brain damage. <laughs> got brain damage. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Uh, but yeah. he sees he sees the three crates and he gives you guys a nod like, all right, let's get out of here. And so we just cut to a wide shot of uh, his train, Hornet's train, pulling off. And in the distance, we see that other train already uh, half a mile up ahead on the tracks going into the outskirts of Night City, peeling off into the darkness. Time passes and eventually uh, your train pulls back into that first station where you boarded it. Uh, the door swings open and Toots jumps out. There's a cargo van already waiting outside. Uh, two big dudes uh, hop out the back and they're wearing like uh, comedy and tragedy masks. <laughs> cool. Um, That's amazing. They jump into the train. They don't even uh, look at you. I mean, if they are, you can't even tell because you can't see their eyes really behind these masks. And it's nighttime. They just start grabbing the crates and loading them onto their van one by one. Toots walks up to the uh, passenger side of the uh, van door and a tinted window slides about halfway down and a gloved hand comes out with an envelope that Toots grabs just as the window slides back up. The van is finished loading. The two grunts hop back in the uh, back of the van and they're shutting the doors just as the van takes off into the night. Toots walks towards a gyro bike that was hidden among some trash cans there. He's like, great working with you guys. Uh, Hope it's not another 20 years before I see you again, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to hear you with my friends. You stay safe out there. And then he just... <laughs> 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 takes God, out that was the such night. a good motorbike. <laughs> that was a pretty That's good great. motorbike. Uh, I'm so, I have such dry mouth right now. I mean, uh, <laughs> my phone yeah. work is going to be right on point. <laughs> we follow uh, just... Elijah Toots riding off into the night <laughs> as all of you just stand there watching. And from there, we cut back to Ignition, the bar where the score began. Uh, and the five of you are sitting around a table. Maybe it's the same table. Maybe it isn't. And you're just waiting. You're waiting. Maybe you're waiting for Hornet. Hornet doesn't show up. But Fox does. His bodyguard. Oh, yeah. She's wearing a mask as oh, well. Yeah. Mono Katana on her back. She sits down. And she's got excellent posture, and she kind of just puts her hands on the table. She moves her back around. You see the hilt of the blade moving back and forth as she adjusts in the seat. She says, Hornet was quite pleased with your work. Don't go dying, and you may hear from him again. And she pulls out four envelopes, lays them on the table like uh, she's a blackjack dealer. And then does like the blackjack hands. Uh, she doesn't do that. I just love. Uh, no more bets. You're a big buddy, fan of blackjack hands. <laughs> my buddy and I call them casino <laughs> hands. Like, all right, thank you. Uh, and walks away. And we fade out. And I wish that we had the rights to like a great 80s song right oh, now. Yeah. yeah. Because if we did, it would start. It would be like and that I opening lick to When Doves Cry. Yeah. And while that pl while Prince is wailing away on that song, uh, we black out and then we just cut to these vignettes. And overhead, uh, we see Quake sitting at home at his home rig, sitting in his shitty little cargo crate. Uh, and he's playing the audio back and forth that he found on the hammerhead. You just hear it play again. We got to the scene. There were three NCB, NCPD patrolling the area. We got by them easily enough, but the train was guarded by a dozen punks we didn't account for. We ran into a few minor problems, lost a few good soldiers. Good thing membership is up these days. We're bringing the crates up north to our tech friend. I'm sure clockwork can get these opened up for us. Once we get these cracked, <laughs> the sights won't be bothering anyone anymore. He rewinds, cuts out a few words, replays it, three NCPD patrolling the area. Cuts it again, three NCPD. Then he brings in another file from his desktop, splices it over it. I killed, I 
I killed. I killed three NCPD. He rewinds, cuts, rewinds again, pulls from the end of the recording. <laughs> the sights won't be bothering anyone anymore. Rewinds, splices, replays. Now we're just looking at his fingers. He's moving so fast through this programming. We look at how fast his types, his eyes flitting back and forth behind the goggles. He drags another huge audio file full of cuts and splices and drops this in. He hits play and a long audio clip starts playing with an incriminating statement after an incriminating statement after an incriminating statement and we can just see that it's this massive beautiful mind's worth of audio splices and it says yeah i killed three ncpd they won't be bothering anyone anymore he plays it again yeah i killed three ncpd they won't be bothering anyone anymore it was like clockwork plays it again and we just hear this ball playing over and over again and he looks up at a picture on uh, his desktop of him and a girl just laughing and having drinks he looks back at the desktop hits save drags the new file and the file is named Zoe (laughs) we flash out of there and we see Moto grabbing an envelope full of Eddie's he smiles but his gaze is fixed on his new crew about him for the first time maybe in a long time since he came over here It's clear that Moto feels like he belongs to something greater. From there, we cut to a gang hideout. A couple of thugs are nodding off in the corner. There's a couple of teens with like spikes, like football Legion of Doom spiked uh, pad (laughs) shoulders. And they're just like wrestling and tearing shit off of a car. Another guy walks in. We don't see who he's talking to. He's like, hey boss, Sister Christian's dead. Moto wasn't alone. We pan around and we see Archie Doohan just rubbing his chin. Oh, 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 Archie. That fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Archie Doohan. Fucking Archie so Doohan. Mohan, so Moto, uh, he says, so Moto wasn't alone. Seems like my old pal Lemmy has some friends of his own now. I've lost the accent. Seems like my old pal, I lost my Irish accent that I was doing That's for okay. a Scottish character. <laughs> he says, Moto, Moto wasn't alone. Seems like my old pal Lemmy has some friends of his own now. Well, I've got friends too. He pulls out his agent and punches in a number. Hey, it's Scotty. Looks like our mutual friend is no longer flying solo. Maybe it's time you make your way to Night City and we take care of this problem once and for all. We fade out of there and we flash to Jade. Jade is saying goodbye to Kevin Ragbone as he walks up to the (laughs) lobby of her building together. There's this awkward moment where maybe he tries to go in for a hug or something more and they both feel it. But Kevin pulls back. He's a professional, goddammit. (laughs) Kevin. He he did hold his hand uh, by the (laughs) flamethrower. And he felt every (laughs) pulse in her finger. And he says, good night. Call me when you need me. And he turns away, and Jade just watches as Kevin disappears into the night. Then we cut to Jade now walking through the hallways of her upscale corporation provided conapt. She comes to her apartment door, looks down, and sees that the wood looks splintered near the doorknob leading into her apartment. She keys in quickly, walks in, and sees the apartment in complete disarray. There's a news report on the TV that can be heard in the distance. It seems that the gang war in the north end of the combat zone has come to an end, as the booster gang known as the Iron Sights employed a deadly neurotoxin to wipe out a major chapter of the Red Chrome Legion. How this devastating neurotoxin got into their hands, no one quite knows. But if this gets out into... And we don't really hear the end of this report, because now... Now, Jade is worried, I assume, for your sister. Do you call out for May? Mm-hmm. You call out. There's no answer. You start looking around frantically. You hurry about. You dip into her room, and her room is a disaster. And there's signs of a struggle. There's a note lying on May's bed. You pick it up, and we just close up on your face as your eyes go wide, and you drop the paper to the ground. We follow the paper's slow descent all the way to the floor and see that it's on Omega Corp stationery. Oh, God! We zoom out of there, and we see Ron Yolo. Yolo, your family is packing up from wherever you've been holed up that night in Night City. Part of the motorcade is already pulling out while some of the people are still packing up, you among them. A guy walks by and pats you on the back. Hey, heard about your score with Hornet. Nice work, Yolo. Is that right? 
<laughs> He's alright. Ron's He's a shy guy. Work. Ron just shyly smiles back and doesn't want to take too much credit. Doesn't want the attention. Yeah. It's part of his character build. I'm shy. Just <laughs> 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 be shy. Uh, that guy walks away, and Ron, you're left alone for a moment, packing up. Heading out on the road, maybe back into the Reclaimer territory, back outside of Night City. You've had enough of Night City for one week. But as you're standing there, a man walks out of the shadows of the bridge overpass where you were camped out. You just hear a voice. Hey, YOLO. We need to talk. And we can't see the face. We only see this person standing in the shadows. But this person's hand comes into the light, the, the light of the street lights from the bridge. And we see that the hand is holding several vials of perhaps a neurotoxin has biohazard all over the vials. Matches the insignia you saw on the crates on the hammerhead. He steps out of the darkness. It's Elijah Toots. Oh. What? Oh. To be continued. Oh. We're gonna continue this shit. Wait, we did it. Yes. What? We Can did it, everybody. Did it. Did it. Train heist. <laughs> Train heist. Congratulations to our winners of the giveaways. Well done. Oh, thank you guys for watching. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Wow. We will be back with more Cyberpunk Red, but join us next week for some Tales from the Loop. This is Elijah Toots out.